Uh, AJ, <laughs> I have some really, really good news. I'm pregnant, and it's yours. What? I'm uh, <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant, baby. Yeah. <laughs> It's really it's not yours. a good time. <laughs> I really thought we had more time. More time? No, you you slammed it right in me. It was <laughs> it was pretty quick. Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do! The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names in the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you're going to take home with you. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there was something truly special about making that trip, picking a movie out by hand, and taking all your clothes off and badly playing guitar on your couch while you watch it. (laughs) On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes who breathe when I breathe, when I piss, they help. Sean Pryor and AJ Vance, how the heck are you? Hey, ever since you gave us the lowdown on some of the health things going on during that Patreon episode, I'm here to help you. Huh? Yeah, we I, we I, take I, you to the toilet and we, like, yes. help. We He takes one leg, I take one leg, we stand you up yep. so you can empty everything out. We help we help basically do a squatty potty, but for when you pee. Reverse. <laughs> it's yeah. really yes. nice. I have a mental <laughs> image of a urinal, of us doing that at a urinal, <laughs> where you're holding me in the air with my feet in the air. Like a very yeah. fancy restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> where there's like the guy who's like dispensing the soap for you and giving like you your towels or whatever. Would you like Just squatty watching. potty treatment? <laughs> Excuse me, would you... <laughs> How much does that cost? No, we got this. <laughs> oh, well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss a movie that finally gave the people what they demanded. Uh-huh. Michael Bay and Nick Cage working together. Michael Bay's favorite movie that he was ever made, not to be confused with his least favorite. Mm. Movie number three in our month-long May of Bay Uncaged series, not a movie about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We are, of course, talking about 1996's The Rock. Yeah! Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing The Rock scene by scene with a modern eye, but in order to do that properly, we must first discuss it with pure Nostalgia. AJ, tell us the first time you ever saw this movie, what your thoughts were and what your rating is was. Uh, yes, you, sir. TBS? No. Fuck. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, you. Uh, TNT. FX. Wow, okay. There, oh, we, go. FX, there we go. Baby. Um, yeah. You guys know I'm a TV movie guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> really love my TV edits. What we brought AJ in um, for. We got Sean in for a lot of like yeah. the technical aspects. We brought AJ in just to tell us what channel this <laughs> was on was in on. the late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that was uh, 11, 12? Yeah, actually, uh, syndication was bought by FX from TNT <laughs> mm. uh, in the early 2000s, uh, 2001, I think. Fascinating. Something like I don't Ooh. know what I just said. Uh no, guys, I remember this very vividly and uh, of watching this movie uh, on TV. But, you know, we didn't rent a lot of movie like a lot of movies as like a family. But for some reason, every now and again, we would watch a movie that was like on TV as a family. Hurry and, up and just start again. Oh, hey, it's starting. <laughs> we have no control over this to enjoy <laughs> yeah. for our good time that we're trying to have and facilitate as parents. <sighs> that's it. Uh, but just watching this and you, you try to make you try to make the quick bathroom run and during commercials and whatnot and the bad the bad edits for the swears and the cusses. But I love this movie, guys. I loved it so much. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now that this is nostalgically like a 9.2 nice 9.2 yeah. for aj sean what about you man 
Uh, kind of the same realm there. Uh, I, I think me and my friend Jordan were watching Mad TV. We used to watch Mad TV all the time. And like right after it on, I don't know what channel, probably, maybe FX, let's just say FX, uh, The Rock was playing. And we were like, um, we're staying up for this. And he was <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think so, Sean. Uh, Wait, the Rock so- has his own movie? I thought he was a wrestler. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Rock bottom. Uh, yeah, so we stayed up for it, and uh, we fucking loved it. This, this is my pal that I watch just action movies with, like Point Break and all those kinds of movies. Um, and yeah, we loved it, like I said, and uh, I would probably say I would give this an eight. What are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> you know, I was going to say it, didn't you? I was trying to say it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I loved this movie as a kid. This was one that we bought on VHS. We owned yeah. the VHS tape, so we watched it all the time. This is right around the time, I think I've told this before, when we... When I moved from St. Louis to Cedar Rapids, but all my family and friends still lived in St. Louis, so we made the trek in our uh, 1993 Dodge Caravan, and we would take the middle seat out and put one of those VHS VCR Mm, things and just bring like five VHSs with us, and this was always one of them. I'm, I'm calling this a nine nostalgically for me. Executive producer Bud Larson is on the show today. Hell yeah. He says, I remember going to the movie theater to see this. I want to say I was about 14-ish. If you've heard any of my reviews, you know I love me some movie quotes. You want me to to stick this into my heart? Are you fucking nuts? (laughs) And losers always complain about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. I always liked U.S. history. I've always liked movies and shows about prisons and prison escapes. When this came out and they were going to have it based around and on Alcatraz Island, I knew it was going to be a summer blockbuster with stars like Nick Cage, Sean Connery, Ed Harris as a rogue Marine general. How could you go wrong? Nostalgic rating 8.75. Nostalgically, as a group, boys, we are 8.74. Nice. Dude. Sean brought it down. That was pretty close ah, to dude. getting up there. 8.74 is going to take us to number six. That is just just below the Mighty Ducks, just above Three Ninjas. Ooh, wow. a, that is some big time <laughs> wow. spot to hang out for this movie. Dang. Love that. So next, we got to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie so that we can strip away the nostalgia, talk about it with modern eye. Sean, what do you got, man? I got produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer. They're back. And also Sean Connery. Story by David Weisberg and Douglas Cook. Screenplay by Mike, or sorry, Mark Rosner. Cinematography by John Schwartzman. A little fun fact about him. I believe he did uh, Armageddon and Bad Boys as well. Uh, he is. He found out on set, I think, that he was cousins with Nick Cage. What? Um, T- Talia Shire is is uh, Jonathan Schwartzman's stepmother, and that is uh, Nick Cage's aunt. Weird. Yeah, kind of fun, dude. Illuminati. Yeah, what's going on? Hollywood. Yeah, Illuminati. But that was I. Th- so j- I looked up because I know Talia Shire uh, was in Rad, and I looked up John Schwartzman to see if he had anything to do with it. He did the beginning titles of Rad. Fucking awesome! Yeah. Wait, so wait, there you go. Who who did? Sorry, their uh, their cinematographer John Schwartzman on uh, the Rock. He's just he's just knocking it out of the yeah. park. As far I, as I'm concerned. I that's the kind of shit I live for. Yeah, finding that stuff out. Okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay. I, I know. It's a ten for me, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a ten. <laughs> Music by Nick Glenny Nick Nick Glenny Smith and Hans Motherfucking Zimmer. Directed by Michael Motherfucking Bay. Here's the cast. I don't know if it's as stacked or more stacked than Armageddon, but Ooh, here we go. I don't think as much, but let's see. Nick Nick Cage, Sean Connery, Ed Harris, John Spencer, David Morse, William Forsyth, Vanessa Marcel, John C. McGinley, Tony Todd, Bo Keem, Woodbine, Lunell, Philip Baker Hall, Steve Harris, and Claire Falani. Just a, like a hodgepodge of especially male actors of like uh, character actors yep, that's in true. the 90s. The Rock was originally a spec script written by Douglas Cook and David Weisberg. When producers Bruckheimer and Simpson got a hold of a hold of it, they then offered the script to Michael Bay, who made them a good profit on his first feature, Bad Boys. You may want to check that episode out. Bay, uh, during the uh, arbitration process, the WGA only credited the two first script writers and Mark Rosner, who did a pass on the script. Bay was furious at the WGA for not crediting Hensley, who uh, who worked with him on Bad Boys. Yeah, worked with him on Bad Boys. They also failed to credit other touch-up artists at the time, such as Aaron Sorkin and Quentin Tarantino. That's mind-blowing. I he, thought I thought that was just fake news. Like sometimes no. the stuff we see on IMDb, it's like, yeah, that's not true. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, he's confirmed it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, it, it's it's always happens with Michael Bay movies. He just, oh, I'm going to have everyone write something yeah. for me. 
Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was originally <laughs> offered the part of Goodspeed in the film, but didn't like the script. Thank God. He later regretted that. <laughs> he later regretted turning that down. Of course, he did. Uh, the rest of casting went off with uh, relative ease, as when Nicolas Cage was cast, that's what made Sean Connery accept the role as well. What? Connery then became an executive on the shoot. Yeah, he uh, once he heard that uh, Nicolas Cage was going to be in the movie, he's like, I want to do it. Wow. I guess he was okay. just a fan and wanted to do it. Um, so, well, like Nick Cage was coming off of winning an Oscar for Leaving Las Vegas. This is mm. his next movie right after Leaving Las Vegas. So, and well, where is Sean Connery at in his life? I mean, obviously Bond's over and yeah. stuff like that. But what what was his? Okay, so this was what ninety three. So I think he had or sorry ninety six. He, he had already won an Academy Award for Untouchables, I believe. But he's really not like Hunt for Red October was 90. And then like it just seemed like a bunch of kind of random stuff that he did after that. So he just seemed to not be in the prime anymore, you know, of, of Sean Connery. Maybe this was like his, oh, I am an actor still. Yeah. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to show the world what I can do. I'm glad he said yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, almost all of the film was shot on location at Alcatraz Island. Since being decommissioned as a prison, the island has become a tourist attraction like in the film. Much to the cast and crew's dismay, this island still held regularly scheduled tours despite a major Hollywood production being filmed on the rock. Sean Connery insisted that the production build him a cabin on the island so he, didn't, he didn't have to be ferried to and from set every day. I would love that, too. Can you imagine be staying a on Alcat- Alcatraz? That's kind of creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> I think I think at this point he's probably just making requests so he can just say, yeah, I got to stay on Alcatraz. Yeah. I just... I just make random, like outlandish requests, be Arthur nudes, that kind of stuff, <laughs> and so I can say I crazy, got it, man. and that's it. That's Sean Connery. I didn't look at him. He probably but, said, yeah. he "Probably said like I was a prisoner on Alcatraz. I did get paid for it, but technically, technically, I was once on there. that ferry left, he couldn't leave. Exactly. Yeah. So he was a prisoner. Yeah. Sean Connery was obviously pretty intimidating to work with, especially for uh, second time filmmaker Michael Bay. Having heard the actor was notoriously harsh on directors in the past, the task seemed daunting. However, Connery was very cordial and accommodating to the young director. One time during shooting, the producers were hard on Bay after he went a little under schedule, over schedule. Sorry, when on his way to have a meeting the the big wigs Conner, with the big wigs, the Connery stopped Bay and asked if he could come with. Bay obliged. When the two arrived. To the meeting, the producers were shocked to see the man who had played James Bond, and even more shocked when the actor told them that Bay was doing a fine job and stop harassing the boy. The producers then did not bother Bay ever again. What a power move! Stop man. harassing the boy. Okay, <laughs> that's what he called him on set. He's like, "Are you doing good, boy? That was a good take, boy. Let's use that." Uh, the Rock was released on June seventh, nineteen ninety six, and on a budget of seventy five million, the film made three hundred and thirty five point. Zero six million at the box office and was nominated for Best Sound at the 69th Academy Awards. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, boys, we are just three dudes trying to put out some weekly content for you. We've been doing this for more than two years. There are millions of podcasts to listen to, and that's why we're so excited to have you here with us. But we need you to help us even more. We need you to do two things. One, we need you to check out our sponsors. All these great companies we talk about, uh, HelloFresh, NordVPN, Cedar Ridge, BetterHelp, all these great companies... If you actually go out and use our promo codes on that stuff, not only do you get something, but you're actually showing these sponsors that we are a good show worthy of uh, of helping out. So I think that is a huge thing. Check out any sponsors we ever have. Also, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash confused breakfast. That's where you get bonus access to a month or sorry, a weekly conversation. We recently talked about how we knew Sean hates vacations, but we had to get the update. Does he still hate vacations? Right. We figured out how his cruise was. We talked about my health. Like AJ said, we have these great convos that you get to listen to. If you go to patreon.com slash confused breakfast, sign up. That's really what we want from you guys. That's where you can sponsor us. That's where you can sponsor us. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Never thought about it like that. Never huh? thought about it like that. <laughs> Patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Business oriented. For sure. <laughs> Up next, we have AJ. He does the research for us. He gives us the ratings and reviews of critics and fans alike. What do you got, man? Guys, we're here for this. It's an incursion underwater, retaken an impre- uh, impregnable fortress held by an elite team of U.S. Marines in possession of 81 hostages and 15 guided rockets loaded with the tomato beater. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. I don't like that. So, scariest environment imaginable. That's what you're saying. <laughs> scariest, scariest environment imaginable. Okay, that's all you have to say. Scariest environment imaginable. 67% on the tomato meter. That ties us of any movie we've done with point 
break. Ooh. Per the critics. And I feel really good yeah, about that. Yeah, that feels great. Feels awesome. I'm totally fine with that. Also, fun fact, you said 67 for the tomato meter. That is the second highest uh, Michael Bay rated movie by the critics. What's the first? Ambulance. Really? 68. Just over. Just, <laughs> just over. over. He hasn't gotten to the IMDb uh, credit of no. good no. movie at <laughs> well, 7.1. Tech, well, tech, well, 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 well. Okay, okay, now. okay. Jumping the gun. Audiences are in uh, a little bit of disagreement here. 85% from the audiences on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's uh, 7.4 on IMDb. 7.4? Oh, wow. A.K.A. this is an absolute masterpiece. masterpiece. <laughs> or in Michael Bay terms, a blaster piece. Well, that's and, uh, and you yeah. will be interested to know that this is the highest rated Michael Bay movie on IMDb. On IMDb, okay. Uh, that takes it to number 38 of any movies we've done that is slightly below The Warriors, slightly above Karate Kid. I feel like it's great there too. God it's damn. just kind of like that's feels, right there. Feels good to me. It really does, guys. God, thank you, fans and critics alike. Yeah. You guys are you guys are nailing it today. Uh, how about uh, twenty five out of a hundred? Uh, this is uh, some critic reviews. Uh, David Sterrett. I just I just really like this little uh, comment. Can a mild mannered toxicologist and an eccentric Alcatraz veteran stop hit stop Gen- General Hummel before it's too late? Learning the answer means sitting through more than two hours of violence, <laughs> vulgarity, and all-around excess served up with high-tech trimmings by director Michael Bay. What excess is he referring to? Just explosions and ah. like set pieces. I, probably. Say, I, didn't, I didn't see any drug usage. Yeah, it insists, That doesn't have to be drugs. It <laughs> insists upon itself, Mike. The movie insists upon itself. <laughs> Do some assisting upon yourself. You're right. Guy. Uh... Roger Ebert, we haven't heard from our Mel our boy. The Ebs. Raj Ebs. He gave this uh a three out three and a half stars. All right. He was stoked on this. That's good. It's one of the highest ratings I found actually for this movie. That is a stoked rating. That's a pretty stoked rating. Um The Rock is a first rate slam bang action thriller <laughs> with a lot of style <laughs> and no little humor. It's made out of pieces of other movies, yes. And not much in it is really new, but each element has been lovingly polished to a gloss. And there are three skillful performances. Sean Connery as Mason, uh, an intelligence expert who's been in prison for 30 years. Nicolas Cage as Goodspeed, an FBI scientist. And Ed Harris as General Hummel, a war hero with a mad scheme to wage chemical warfare against San Francisco. It's kind of a weird thing, too. Uh, We'll get there. (laughs) Chemical warfare. At San Francisco. (laughs) (laughs) Director Michael Bay orchestrates these elements into an efficient and exciting movie with some big big laughs, sensational special effects sequences, and sustained suspense. And it's interesting to see how good actors like Connery, Cage, and Harris can find a way to occupy the center of this whirlwind with characters who somehow manage to be quirky and convincing. There are several... Several identikit Hollywood action stars who can occupy the center of chaos like this, but not many can make it look like they think that they think they're really there. Mm. Watching The Rock, you really care about what happens. You feel silly later for having been sucked in, <laughs> but that's part of the ride. Hell yeah. I like that. I'm a big fan of that. Cool. <laughs> slam bang. That movie, slam I don't like bang. That. that movie was slam bang, homies. I'm, I, <laughs> Let me tell you what. Dude, that's first rate slam bang. <laughs> I feel like his favorite part of the old Batman show was like the the punches. Like, <laughs> slam, he bang. would be the type that like, I love when they go. Ow, oh my god! Bam! Oh, uh, I I I found so many ten out of tens that I wanted to be able to read on here. Um, so I am I'm just gonna have to pull a couple here. Uh, top ten action films of all time. Warning spoilers. I'm only borrowing your Humvee. This might be the best action movie by far when it comes to 90s Jerry Bruckheimer. Definitely worth a watch. Nicolas Cage gives his best performance and is the least bit crazy. I, I'm not a big fan of crazy Nick Cage. I know you are. I love it. He just, yeah. I love it. Stand down, Captain. Stand down, Captain. People love quoting this movie, guys. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? These are 10 out of 10s. My rating, 10 out of 10. This movie is awesome action from start to finish. Uh, uh, the good guys gear up and go to Alcatraz to stop the soldiers only to be ambushed. It's a damn good movie. One of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. I'm going to give you guys a bad one. 
No. I'm no. just going to skip all the good ones. They're basically all the same thing. Yeah, it's okay. awesome. I, I fucking best, love it. <laughs> best movie ever. Ultimately, my favorite movie of all time. Oh, stupid. It just reeks of the 90s, but I don't care. That's what people are literally <laughs> saying in their head. And I like, love when he's fucking his girlfriend. <laughs> Dude, it's so fucking hot. <laughs> Oh, who's your best chemical toxicologist? Uh, 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 Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the derail. Give, give us a. I'll get one. you the bad one. This is one out of ten, guys. Horrible. This is in Dece- this is December thirty one <laughs> of two thousand six. Okay, New Year's New Year's Eve. <laughs> let's, Tra- let's put on a movie. Tragic Clara two had nothing better to do but write a review for for The Rock. Oh. This movie is terrible. It's all ridiculous action and explosions. Has nothing to do with Alcatraz. <laughs> what? The characters are poorly drawn. It's way too long. And the script is laughable. I was hoping that this movie would at least be a fun popcorn flick, but it is painful. This movie is terrible. It's all ridiculous action and explosions. It has nothing to do with Alcatraz. <laughs> What? It's called Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> Alcatraz means pelican. <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah, John. Yeah, you're welcome. I kept watching. I kept watching, <laughs> hoping that this movie would become something more. The movie is terrible. Okay. It is ridiculous action and explosions. All right. And has nothing to do with Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> she just copy and paste. She, I don't know. Is she? That's what I'm imagining. Right? <laughs> And then, and then, uh, oh, but they did, they did go to say, uh, I was hoping that this movie would be something more than what it was. It's just ridiculous action and explosions <laughs> and has nothing to do with Alcatraz. Also, uh, Billy <laughs> broke up with me tonight. <laughs> and this is his favorite movie. I, hate I was expecting a New Year's kiss and I did not get it. <laughs> instead, instead, I've got Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Well, is that it, AJ? Yeah, I like to think that that's a little bit of a ploy on uh, they just felt the movie just kept doing the same exact thing. Over. Uh, no, that's no, that's no, all no, I can no, get. No, no, I'm no, sorry, I read no, into it too much. No, 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 no. That person did not plan that. Please do not <laughs> pretend like they did. Don't give them credit, AJ. No. Well, boys, what do you say we quit the chit-chat a-hole? <laughs> okay. And get a plan in place to head to Alcatraz. The Rock hasn't been a functional prison in 33 years until now. The world is being FedEx to hell in a handcart, and it's up to us to stop a military general from annihilating the city of San Francisco. Tour's over, Bob. Here we go! <laughs> can, I, can I try it? Yes, try okay. it. <laughs> oh, he's been practicing yeah, this. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's End it with the, a here we go, please. All okay. right, all right. Let's cut the chit-chat a-hole! Here we go. <laughs> My friends, this episode is sponsored by NordVPN. I have two reasons the Mike Schulte two reasons special why you need to listen to what I'm saying. Number one, do you ever get frustrated that you can't watch certain live sporting events because they aren't televised or available in your country? I've talked about this blackout dates, things not being available. It's like it doesn't, it's so anti American to be like, you can't watch this. Yeah. So with NordVPN, you can switch your virtual location to a country that is showing the sports event that you want to watch so you don't miss out and can watch the action live. That is how beautiful NordVPN is, is just switch where you're coming from. You're tricking the internet, and they can't tell you what you can and cannot watch. The other thing, this is nuts. With a global recession kind of happening right now, world's getting a bit crazy. Everybody's looking to save a little money while protecting yourself online. Here's what's nuts. I just found this out. NordVPN... You can change your virtual location and sign up for subscription services via other countries and pay a cheaper price. That's it. Net Netflix in Mexico is cheaper than the US UK. That's where so it's you at. You switch your NordVPN, sign up from Mexico, and then it's cheaper. You can also, mind blowing, book flights and holidays via other countries and pay less. You can go like trick the internet into thinking you're in a different country. And save money by buying a trip to that country or flights to that country. Pure insanity. NordVPN pays for itself with the savings you can have out there. So listen, you got to grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash breakfast to get a huge discount offer. Um, You get the discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. Completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. This is an absolute no-brainer. 
Try it for 30 days. You don't like it. You get your money back. But you also get the four months for free by using NordVPN.com slash breakfast. You have to check it out, please. NordVPN.com slash breakfast. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Back to the episode. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so scene Fucking one, Brigadier it. General Francis Hummer, Hummer <laughs> and Major Tom Baxter lead a rogue group of Marines to steal a stockpile of VX gas rockets. We meet Dr. Stanley Goodspeed as he diffuses a chemical weapons package in a lab. He goes home to find out his girlfriend is pregnant. The next day, Hummel and his men seize control of Alcatraz Island. Hummel contacts the FBI and the Pentagon, threatening to launch the rockets against San Francisco unless the U.S. government pays him $100 million from a military slush fund. My friends, <clears throat> if you consider Zero being the moment that the first scene of the movie starts, mm-hmm. and then you go five minutes ahead in, uh, of time, two and a half of those are slow motion. <laughs> I, I timed it. Okay. Two, two and a half of the first five minutes of this movie are slow motion shots. Okay. This man knows exactly what he wants when he films a movie. Well, there, I, it, this, it baffles me that a shot can be slow motion and not go past 2.6 <laughs> right. seconds. Jesus Christ. So we're going to do this. Like, well, I guess it's the end now, un- unfortunately. But like Armageddon, what was it? Like no shot went past like two something. No, it was like one point. Bad Boys seconds. is probably kind of the same-ish, maybe around three or four. Um, and then this is 2.6. So you're literally, yes, in that, that first I just five love minutes, that that stat is available for Michael Bay movies. And that Sorry. someone went through and fucking did that. Yeah. Someone figured, but yeah, you're absolutely right. How do, you, how do you do a slow motion shot, <laughs> but also not make it more than two seconds? Just, like, you're not showing me anything. We're slowing the frame down, Michael. What's, how about we just watch it for a little bit? <laughs> no. Nope. Cut it. I'm bored. Just oh. defeats the purpose. All the <laughs> do you... Another fire title uh, beginning, by the way. It's, uh, do, you ever, do you notice like what the, the um, posters look like for every Michael Bay movie? It's just faces, three guys. flames, <laughs> title. Yeah. Like, it, look at them all side by side. Sometimes they're incredible. Oh, somebody, will somebody please do us a solid? <laughs> oh my god! And turn yes. us into a Michael Bay movie poster, please, please and thank you. We'll send you Here. PNGs of our faces and yeah. everything, guys. Uh, do do a heroic pose just for your Michael Bay po- uh, poster, so okay. they can clip it. Okay. okay, AJ's first. Okay, there you go, AJ. Okay, do me. Okay, do Sean. All right, look. We got it. Somebody's got to take these freeze frames from our YouTube channel, please. You guys got that? <laughs> if okay. you don't, Craig will. And then Craig will charge us $1,000 yes. for it. So, the, so hopefully you guys can do it. Just make something explode. Probably a whiskey bottle. Yeah, hell uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Ed Harris <laughs> looks like he invented the Marines. <laughs> like He looks like his name is Semper Fi. <laughs> <laughs> for some, so somehow. do you do you love him in this role? Absolutely, yes. He's he's so believable in this role. Yeah, he is. He literally is. Like Ed Harris is he is a marine, and if he's not, he you know how they give out like honorary degrees from Berkeley. They should give out honorary <laughs> <laughs> like things for like the Marine Corps. That would be fucking awesome. Yeah, like honorary Medal of Honor. That's what it is. Like to actors Medal of honorary. Who did a, Medal of honorary. Like to actors who did a good job portraying a marine. That's, like why not? Yeah, I, don't worry. I mean that they they in knight England like, they get yeah, knighted. Yeah. Sir, Sir Sean, Sean Connery. See? Yeah, I mean, come on. I find it. I find it interesting that okay. So these these Marines are purposely they're going in to steal these VX gas things. They're purposely using darts. We find this out. I I thought as a kid they were killing them, but yeah. you learn through their dialogue that you know they're, we're just putting them out for what they only last thirty minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. But they, I mean they're going through all this trouble, but then <laughs> literally like they shoot the one guy with the dart and he falls off and dies <laughs> off of a tower. <laughs> they shoot another guy with the dart. He falls down the steps and breaks his neck. <laughs> like what are we doing here? Well, he'll wake up, but he'll be paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> like, At least fuck, he's dude. alive. Yeah. They, <laughs> they don't want full responsibility of the death. They just they're an accessory to it. Yeah. That's, and that's okay. Which is like harsh and shocking for Ed Harris's character because Man, this guy is hard for Marines. Oh yeah, like I feel like he is gay for Marines. Yeah. Like, good God, he loves yeah he, Marines. He, yeah, he's he 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 loves Marines. He might he's in love <laughs> with Marines, which is great. Do yes. that, but it's just like <laughs> take care of him a little bit. I but but do you think these guys is. these guys are not Marines? Like these these little peons guarding the the VX gas rockets? No, 
It's oh, a milita- yeah. Is it a military base? It's just a military base. These are the guys that are like, well, we can't really send them to Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're a liability. Let's have them watch these <laughs> horrible, dangerous Let's gases. have them in on Saturday because General Hummel and his men are coming in, and it's going to be fine. <laughs> See, okay. Cause, yeah, because they're not breaking in, which is also really so. weird. Like, they're they're letting him come in with his men. Why do we have to have them, like, repel the truth? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Why are they sneaking in? They opened the door for him and his team. Why yeah. didn't? Why didn't? Yeah. Why? Why not just go in and be like, oh yeah, he he could just pull like a how the Grinch stole Christmas. He's like. There's a light bulb that won't light on this missile. We have to take it back to the shop. And orders from the, <laughs> and orders take from the it president. Back home so I can fix it and I'll bring it back. Well, like you said, like, too. Okay, General. They're not Marines, so they're probably just like if they if they caught him being like taking something, be like, what are you doing? He's like, oh shit. Um, we're stealing this. Oh, you can't do that. Why? Well, we're doing it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to report this. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. like that's it. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna be like, put the Thing down. <laughs> you could have honestly. He's a general. He's a, he's like a brigadier general. He's like he's high up. Yeah. Right. In in in. He's like the, the most respected People military person of of, alive right now. I mean, now. it is yes. an honor for you to be here. AKA, hey, if you wanted those just loaded up, I'd happily do it for you. Yeah. We would just have loaded those up, and you wouldn't have to go through this whole thing. And now, now you've got other soldiers being reported to their families, being like. What happened? What do you mean? What happened to him? He said he was just a normal day at the base. <laughs> he died. He fell off a tower. He died. How did he fall off? He's been up there a million times. <laughs> yeah, he got shot with a dart by other. So now you've got. Does does the slush fund money go to any of their? No, no, no. Yeah, no. Nope. See, this their is bullshit. Brains are slush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Falling off this fucking. His building. words are slush now. Uh, yeah. The the uh, effects of the. The VX yeah, gas yeah. are pretty terrible and frightening, uh, horrifying, and and really really well done for the makeup. So as not well. terrible. <laughs> you said the effects are terrible. Quote: The effects are, are, <laughs> they are terribly wonderful. They look like right. they would be terrible to experience. Okay, yeah. there you go. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I dude, this this frightened. The, these were the two moments I did not like to watch in this mm-hmm. movie when I was younger. A little too little cre- too creepy. It's like let them out, and they're like, no, we can't. Yeah. We can shut the door. We got to go. That's terrifying. Major, major like phobia. I really thought that poisonous <laughs> drugs and VX gas was going to be a bigger problem in my life. I thought that locked chambers with gas in them were going to be a bigger problem in my life. <laughs> Around okay. 2002. And that was 2000. kind of real. And yeah, I did not like these these scenes at all. And then he just that guy. You're just staring at your buddy as he's just going down, <sighs> oh, it's bubbling. Up. And, the, and the way they describe what happens to yeah. you on that gas, <sighs> my god. And in fact, it's like we'll, we'll get to it later. The the idea of them making a million people making that happen to a million people as opposed to just like nuking them and having them instantly right. vaporize is like that's even more frightening. Yeah, that's terrible. I, there was somebody who there's somebody who called out like um like why wouldn't you why w- this is it's like the premise is so stupid why wouldn't you just plant bombs around san francisco and and say that they're going to go off because this is 10 times more horrifying yes mm-hmm. that's why it makes for a better movie yes. so when like the higher ups like find out oh shit it's it's vx gas yeah vx what the fuck Ugh. that's a horrible death well yeah. th- there's an interesting thing that i i love doing our rewatches where i think more critically i've seen this movie 50 times probably mm. But I didn't think about it how so we get to this thing where we meet Stanley Goodspeed and he's diffusing this bomb inside the chamber and and I think about it because they want him to shoot that atrophy needle, which he doesn't do because he's like, no, it'll waste time, it'll waste time. But we see at the end of the movie what that actually does. If he had actually taken the atrophy needle, the movie's over. Would, that yeah. thing would have exploded the entire building. It's true. Produced by Dick Wolf. Right there. <laughs> right, like, like, ah, fine, I'll take it. Oh, the timer ran out. And we're all gone. Because I'm on the ground convulsing and I have no energy to move anymore. Yeah. So yeah. It, does, it seems like a very not well thought out plan for those atrophy needles. It's, it's like, like, hey, sorry, you went in there. You got to figure this out. It's a crazy scene, too, because like <clears throat> they go in there and they're like, okay, we're just going to see what our main character is capable of and what he does and what his purpose is for the movie. And then... Uh, he says we have good news and we have bad news when that when that baby starts yep. farting or shitting or whatever. Mm. And uh and just with the snap of his fingers, Michael Bay creates tension. Oof. He's like, There's enough sarin gas to kill us all. Also, this this baby is filled with C4. If we 
cut this wrong wire. It's like, damn, dude. Also, the rain won't go. It's just oh, a, so. a chamber of of, uh, of hell. Yeah. <laughs> and Michael Bay's just like, yeah, hell yeah. yeah dude. <laughs> How can we make this even worse? Let's, uh, <laughs> exactly. Like, what can we do? It's Throw like, a dog into the mix. It's like this was going to be like a normal scene, but Michael Bay got his hands yes. on it and was like, um, sarin gas and C4. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Somebody, I also read another place that this was, it was VX gas in this thing, but that's not true. No. Right? no, no okay. No. It, they Saren couldn't have been. Yeah. too. Saren's not good. Okay. Okay. Uh, somebody, I, I don't know where I read it. I thought it was a, it was like a, a factoid thing. I was like, it's not VX gas. That'd be way too convenient. They, yeah, yeah. No true. one else, no one has this other than the U.S. government. Okay. It has a stockpile. Gotcha. Okay. Good it, is, uh, is Stanley Goodspeed the first original hipster? <laughs> when he, when he oh, gets these home. sound better. <laughs> when he's getting home talking about vinyl. I'm a Beatlemaniac, so. <laughs> I never in my life had, enter, had ever heard anyone say that vinyl sounded better in, like before this movie. Apparently, that was like his idea. He, like A lot of the quirks of his character were were him like he want he's really? like i i want my character to be obsessed with vinyl and like music and guitar and be the naked Beatles. on the couch i want to be <laughs> i want to show my chest hair and i want to go <laughs> he's just sitting there contemplating life yeah after this experience is this a normal day for him yeah we just think that's a normal day for Stanley Goodspeed, yeah. who apparently was also his name was supposed to be Bill Goodspeed. Bill Stanley, Ugh. Stanley's the way. Oh, no, that's what a terrible. That would have been. I would not. I don't think I could call Nicolas Cage Bill. <laughs> Bill Cage. <laughs> yeah, Bill Cage. That's his dad. Okay, <laughs> my name is not Bill. That's my dad. <laughs> Bill's my dad. You call me Stanley. <laughs> Even then, they called him Will. But AJ, as William. a man, as a man who has experienced this before in his life, Sean, as a man who someday will experience this, and all of our listeners who are on either side of that, when your significant other tells you that they're pregnant, this movie is the wrong way to react to that. <laughs> mm. So you watch this. Watch the, if you expect that maybe your partner will be pregnant someday. Watch this and go. Don't react like that. Yeah. Don't react like that. Y you know how we've talked about, <laughs> we've talked about Top Gun, how it was training for the Navy and NASA. It was like, you know, Armageddon was kind of training for that. Use this as training for that moment in life. Yes, there okay? you go. Yes. It's active training of what not to do. In Maybe. fact, let's try it. Let's try it right now. Uh, AJ, <laughs> I have some really, really good news. I'm pregnant and it's yours. What? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> It's really it's not yours. a good time. <laughs> I really thought we had more time. More time? No, you you slammed it right in me. It was <laughs> it was pretty quick. <laughs> we should have reversed this because. <laughs> well, he's like he's really like you're you're pregnant. Yeah, really? Yeah, I'm pregnant. Wait, what? <laughs> like, like how can sure? how can I be more clear about this? You sure? <laughs> It's a lesson in in like my day was worse than your day, babe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, don't ever feel that way. <laughs> oh my god! So then, okay, so you get you get past the Stanley Goodspeed. Now we actually have the taking of the island right. by his men, which I thought this was kind of a fun scene too because I actually kind of enjoyed the um, the the tour guide Bob. Yeah, oh which my. didn't I don't know if you read that. Apparently, like who who was Ed Harris? Yeah, was yeah. like love this guy so much he was like giggling about him all day about how funny this this tour guide was was his, he an actual tour guide i don't think so okay. no i've seen him in other movies too i think okay. uh I, like i loved to ed harris's quote he's like i was just giggly that day <laughs> <laughs> picturing ed harris giggling makes me in, like, really happy full up marine marine outfit like <laughs> 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 I got it. What are you laughing at? Oh, the fucking Bob, the tour guide. Oh, Bob, oh my god. Play. Okay, okay. Welcome shut up. to shut the up. rock. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. We're going to break. We're breaking for lunch. Ed, Ed, please. Ed. Sorry, I'm guys. Sorry. I'm just giggly today. I don't know what it is. Oh, Bob, it's his shorts. It's his shorts. Uh, his team is great. Uh, yeah, I love seeing Tony Todd, uh, fucking Candyman. Which, which one's Tony Todd? He's the uh, like pretty much the. There's the two guys who hadn't worked with him before. The two new guys come on board. Yeah, yeah, and so Tony Todd's one of them. Candyman. He's Candyman. Um, uh, yeah, I, I the team is great. Um, what's his name? He's always he's always this guy in the in movies. Um, 
Well, well John, other... C, John C. McGinley's there, too, and he's great yeah. point break, yes, obviously. Yes, 100%. Um, I think it's, well, it's Bo Ke- or, uh, Bo Keem Woodvine's awesome. One of them, sorry. It's Yeah, I, I know who that, you're talking about. It's the one who's uh, towards the end who, like. Kind of the almost the beyond big bad. Yeah, he's bad like his guy. second in command pretty David much. David Morris. Yes. 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 He 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 plays that secondary role very well. He's always that guy. The he's loyal so good dog at it. guy. Yeah. Well, and then also you got Raymond Cruz, who is Tuco from Breaking Bad. Oh, is wow. one, is one That's the, right. I w- yeah. And this is weird to me. Explain this. So so I, I went looking for it to see what is his exact name in the movie. And he's un he's uncredited. Why 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 are some people uncredited in movies and some people aren't? Dude, is it because he didn't say a line? I don't know if he actually said a word. He I don't had know. some lines. He had. He was like doing. His comms. name's Sergeant Rojas, and he's uncredited in this movie. He, I don't know. I I don't understand it, man. Like he, 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 he was. He had lines. He was doing comms. He was doing stuff with uh, John C. McGinley's character. I mean, like, and I liked him in this role. He's he been was in doing a ton really well. of stuff, but it's funny how like his defining role in life is this, Tuco Salamanca. I know, right? <laughs> My God, like he's done a lot of things, but my that dude just frightens the hell out of me just seeing him on that's, screen. Yeah. That's the guy in like season one, right? Where yeah, like uh, yeah. Tight, 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 tight. Okay, tight, okay. Tight. Uh, yeah, you're talking about um, Captain Fry is who you were talking Correct. about, I yes. think, right, yeah. Sean? And he is he's just that guy's got the chin that <laughs> is just a can opener, yeah, and it, just a chin for all chins. Um, and that guy is that guy's terrifying to me. And incredibly annoying. <laughs> just want to remind the just want to remind the general of the time, sir. Yeah, my guys are ready to go, cock lock and ready to rock. It's like I hate sir. you, sir. <laughs> I'm well aware of the time, Captain. <laughs> God. All right, I have two questions for you. One, the this is a bit of a plot hole to me. How do you get? How does Hummel get the word out about this to recruit the Marines? Like this is not <laughs> this is not a casual <laughs> conversation to just be like, hey. uh... You did really good uh, back there at that uh, thing we did. Um, have you ever wanted to commit treason and yeah. possibly yes, I have. possibly explode San Francisco in honor of our fallen Marines? I, th- I think about that every day. Okay, well you're with me, and and then you're like, well, what about my friend Bob? And we asked Bob, and Bob's like, you know what? That's something I've never thought of, and I'm going to report you right and now. And Bob is also like, uh, <laughs> well, if he, if he was down for, it, he'd be like, let's print some flyers. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the word out. Well, I, let's get some radio ads going. It probably, yeah, like how do you do that? <laughs> you don't. Yeah, you don't get to post up a flyer in the break room and like take it, take a number if you want to. <laughs> if you want to like join the treason party, <laughs> right? Because like, because a lot of these people have worked we, for him it's, forever. It's Ed Harris's face on the <laughs> on the uh, Uncle Sam. We want you for treason. <laughs> yeah, we want you. <laughs> but like a lot of these guys work for him. But then the two dudes were just like randos. He hadn't even met them. Right. Yeah. How do you trust that they're going to come in and do this yeah, job this for you? Yeah, this is a big deal. Yeah. This is a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. He he says it uh, a couple of days. He's like, this is uh, worked with so-and-so, worked every mission with David Morris, whoever, yeah. you know, and uh, Major Major Baxter was, was his yep. name, I think. And then uh, uh, Commander or Captain Fry and so-and-so. It's like, this is my first time so far. You're, you're, you're From what I see, you're doing really good. It's like those guys are psychos. Any one person <laughs> yeah. can tell that those are your psychos in the group. Those are the guys you don't <laughs> want to have on your team. And somehow it wasn't a red flag that you put out the call for treason and they're the first ones to answer. <laughs> kind of weird. There's a there's a term for uh, like one like kind of black sheep in a group. Another term uh, other than black sheep where uh, like honestly you might even see it a lot in like groups like um the military mm. where oh, it's like oh. um Loose cannon. Ah, ah. That might be uh, what you could define them as. Yeah. yeah. Or you mean like somebody you don't want in a in a very high tension situation? Who's a, who's a little bit? Uh, you don't want that person. Let's escalate things. Other than let's ah. keep things on an even. You know, like yeah. like a loose cannon would be. I wonder what that term is. Like, can't think of it. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Look, I need to be able to trust you without any sense of a doubt, sir. Are you ready to be untrusted by your country <laughs> and commit treason? <laughs> Let's start our relationship on this basis <laughs> of, of untrust. That's a, that's a perfect way. Like the only way you're going to no prove trust. my trust, your trust to me, is by proving that you're willing to break your trust. <laughs> your trust. Something else. I need your full commitment. Are you ready to break your commitment to the U.S. military? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's what I want to hear. Wait, who are? 
right. Well, last. <laughs> sorry. Last question. He says basically he offers these dudes uh, uh, what one million dollars to never come back to the U.S. and you have to go to a non extradition treaty country. Mm. Would you take that deal? A million dollars. If we're taking notes from blank check, a million dollars isn't really that much. <laughs> it's not days. much. Do no. you know what the non-extradition countries are? There are a lot. Uh-uh. You'd have to take your million dollars and go to Iran, North Korea, Syria, Sudan, Afghanistan, Somalia, lots of African countries. <sighs> I feel like if you go in there with the Russia. basis of I've committed treason... With this uh, from this country, they're probably gonna be like, oh, dude, dude, come on in. <laughs> a million Most dollars goes a long way in Somalia. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, that's true. I, just, I guess I, I've seen Euro Trip. You know, some of those countries, it's like your 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 dollars worth a lot. It just seems to be that there's been a lot of tension in a, in almost <laughs> all of those countries. So you're saying no? Yeah. Are you are you saying no? Oh boy, I get. N- yeah, I'm saying no. Well, I can't do it, guys. Now that you've already answered, I'm going to say yes because there yeah. are a couple other countries: Saint dang, Martin, dang it, the Maldives, and Abu Dhabi. I I'm, I'm going to go. Does this shit all the time? <laughs> he does this. Shit. You could have looked up the countries. He blankets these questions and is <laughs> like, "You're Maldives. stupid. I'm smart." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did the research and you didn't. Eat it, dick. <laughs> um. So, well, oh. I I do want to talk about what like. I, I had a note. It was like I I understand what he's doing. I obviously don't agree with it, but I understand like the mistreatment of these military people, uh, these beloved Marines, and you know, like, uh, what do you guys think about that? Like, do you do you agree? I mean, obviously not with what he's doing, but do you understand? Is what I mean. I think it makes for a. I think it makes for a very somehow quick to become complex uh, villain. Yeah. And I think it's great. It, it um, hell of a way to put it. Yes, it's yeah. truthfully it's amazing because like I'm not mad at what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm mad at what what he may have to do to make this point come across. But yeah, like fuck you for not treating these guys the way they should have been mm-hmm. treated. So you're saying you're not mad, you're just disappointed. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Somehow that's, that's really, worse that's every time. Every time. I think you're right, Sean. I think I think it, it's actually an incredibly written character. Yeah. It's well, very yeah. simple. It causes, it causes that, like, I don't know, am I mad or am I happy? What am I thinking? Yeah, I didn't I didn't love, um, I, I, I know, I don't mean to backtrack too hard or anything, but it's not that, I didn't particularly love the introduction and the way his, right. his opening dialogues are kind of written. Pretty corny, like a lot of the background, like, sir, what, what, we're, I'm going to yeah. get you out of there, son, they're don't not, you worry. They're not coming, are they? Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. And like, I know why they did that. I understand it. Even like the points that are very dramatic and him at his wife's gravestone. And you, again, I think that could have been done a little bit better, a little less Michael Bay, mm. and it could have come across a little bit better. I think I agree with you, for um, sure. But then beyond that, though, after all this, his character, great, complex, and very interesting and, and conflicted. It's good. Agree again. Yeah. Hey, you sexy podcast listeners. Thanks for listening to The Confused Breakfast. You know, this show wouldn't be much without uh, the sweet, sweet elixir that we definitely drink on the show every day. Every day. And that is Cedar Ridge Whiskey. Mm. Cedar Ridge Whiskey is my favorite whiskey of all time, and I'm not even saying that. I also love but that's not an ad for this because they suck compared to Cedar Ridge Whiskey. Yeah, I'll say it. Uh, Yeah, I'll say it. I don't think you're supposed to disparage other companies in your ad reads, Sean. We can cut that out. (laughs) Anyway, what I was talking about is Cedar Ridge Whiskey. Um, The the number one whiskey distiller in uh, Iowa for sure. It's been number one like four years in a row, something like that. Uh, Number one in our hearts forever. Uh, You can get the flagship bourbon uh which is really uh, actually my favorite uh or you can get uh the single malt whiskey american quintessential american quintessential single malt which is just so delicious and uh keep an eye out on uh on cedar ridge whiskey's (laughs) website because that is that is where you can find our exclusive single malt whiskey coming straight your way uh brought to you by these boys on confused breakfast uh you can also get uh cedar ridge whiskey number nine fuck yeah dude which is a mix of their flagship bourbon and um what is it it's rye it's bourbon and rye in a crazy mix like just crazy so if you want to be uh kind of like a, a more casual kind of uh, drinker of whiskey, or you want to shoot it just straight up, that's fine too. But uh, you're going to have a good time either way. And what you're going to want to do 
I drink responsibly. That's the most important thing here, most Sean. Most important. Most important. Thank you, Mike. Oh, second second most important. Go to cedarridgewhiskey.com. 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 You sexy podcast listeners. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> on to scene two, boys. The FBI <laughs> brings good speed to work on a plan. Wanting to plan an attack, they decide to bring in John Mason, who's the only prisoner to ever escape Alcatraz. Mason has demands, which include staying in a hotel suite. This allows him to escape, and he's chased all over San Francisco. He meets his daughter, Jade, and has a brief conversation before the FBI detains him again. I have to say something real fast. I didn't even think about it. It's probably stupid. For some reason, it just popped into my head. But when they took the when they went and got the VX to gas rockets, and they said, "Oh, General Hummel's here," and they're like, "We've been expecting you. It's an honor to have you here, sir." And they go past a room, and it's got like balloons and a party table set up. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, like, Welcome, General Hummel. And for some reason, it just popped into my head. And they go past, and they're like taking out two little party hats. On. <laughs> we got ice cream cake. <laughs> General Surprise! Oh! <laughs> that's sorry. the movie. I'm, that's the movie I'm here for. That's, I want the I naked want gun scene. version of the rock. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they leave. They're just like uh, behind them. They left a room that's set up as a party. Fucking one of, about, one of them. <laughs> Sergeant Rojas is like, I'm gonna get a cake real quick. <laughs> <off and go." laughs> one of them's leaving with a party hat with a little string under his chin. Just. Uh. <laughs> What I like birthday parties. Oh my god! Oh, the, don't even do that see, to me, man. You see the you see the soldier dying like in with the VX gas, and then you also see the ice cream cake melting. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> what's worse. I can't, I can't stop, guys. Okay, get me off of this. Oh. This isn't happening. <laughs> this isn't <laughs> happening, <laughs> oh, dude. I'm so sorry. I derailed. Uh, oh. I, the introduction of Sean Connery. It, what do you guys think of him in this role? First off, we can talk about it a little later because I I I like him off the bat a lot. I think maybe later on he's got a little case of you know, he's not doing his own stunts. Right. For sure, and he maybe not in a lot of scenes that he should be in right. later on, uh, especially the ash, action sequences. You know what I mean by that where sh- he's old. Yeah. I'm sorry. But um his presence for sure is amazing. He was, he's a bad man. I love Sean Connery so much. I love him with long hair. I was just going to say, I wanted him to have more time with his like longer hair. But, I then, agree. but then he cuts it and you're like, oh my God, you're he's handsome. Silver Fox. Dude, okay, so <laughs> Logan can attest to this as well. Does he not look like our friend Shane Lunsford? Mm-hmm. Mm. Fucking I can't Silver believe, Fox. I cannot believe you just said that because I've been sitting here going like, who does he remind me of? And wow, sorry for yeah. the audience, but yeah, he does a show in the studio too. Uh, shout out to Shane. Shout uh, out to Shane. Looks and, just and like him. The Groove Life. Yes. yes. Oh my God. I, I just love, <laughs> I just love, he's got some great lines in this movie too. Mm-hmm. Even when he's like, uh, he, he breaks through the, they're interrogating him and he breaks Dude. through and he's like, ah, why am I not surprised you piece of shit? Like, <laughs> Womack, it Womack. Womack. He he says well I, Yeah, you did it. I just need a I just need a sound bite of him just saying Womack. Womack. That's gonna be my that's gonna be my uh text ringtone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he he's just yeah, he's incredible. I love I love his introduction. I love that he's basically we know that Troy Duffy stole this idea for for El Duce. Oh yeah. This is basically El Duce. It's basically El Duce. And we know Troy Duffy didn't st- yeah, he stole everything that he oh, had. You're so right. Yeah, this yeah. is El Duce. Bring him out. Oh, bring him out. He's the most feared prisoner ever. Yeah. yeah. We need to have all these guards around him. He's got long hair. He hasn't talked in ages. 25 years away. Like, <laughs> I think whatever. it was like the same amount of time they were st- socked away. We tried to forget about him. They only bring him back when we need him. It's like, okay, yeah, it's El Duce. <laughs> I, I think it's, but, you know, he, the moment he is on screen and he is um, interacting with anyone else, he's commanding the scene. And he's leading the conversation. When Stanley Goodspeed goes into this so room, good. he's leading him 100% of the way. And he knows right away Stanley Goodspeed is not a field agent or hard, I, I or love hard it, man. Dude. <laughs> like, uh, can we get a cup of coffee in here? Coffee. Uh, oh, no, for me. Oh, yeah. Can we get a cup no, of coffee? No. <laughs> he's like, like asking him like if he wants coffee. It's like he's the prisoner offering him coffee. He's like, oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> An idiot. Oh, can we get some, some coffee in here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. And this is it also speaks to Nicolas Cage's performance here because he's like slowly trying to 
relax <laughs> yeah and get himself into character to to be like he he's really tight and then he's like yeah, you can get good coffee and then he's like leaning back you know and i i like their interaction not this, making much eye contact at yeah, first yeah i like their interaction a lot in this first one i agree i th- i think it's incredible and this is why i love him uh we will get to the, when he says the best line ever but well i'll just say it now like even like when he's when he says uh later on uh let's cut the chit chat a hole there's no mm-hmm. one on earth no that can say a line like that there's no no Arnold Schwarzenegger could have said that. Absolutely role. not. Yeah, like it's Let's cut the chit chat asshole. <laughs> I mean a hole. A hole. It's like this is why I love him. There is there is no other actor like him, and there he makes uh, such odd choices <laughs> that stand out. Like that stands out, and like you're like his, but like when he does his like over the top Nick Cage shit, you're like that's really entertaining. But then he also does this what you're talking about this subdued kind of. A uh, nervous guy, kind of trying to get comfortable with this badass in the room. Yeah. You know, um, I think he can do subtle. I think he can do over the top, and I think, uh, like he, that's why he's my favorite actor next to Joaquin Phoenix. I think he's just brilliant. Mm. I uh, between these two, um, I think. Shoot, what was I going to say? It was about Nick Cage. Oh, it was about the fact that he actually uh, was given a lot of creative control over his character mm-hmm. too. And he, he was the person who decided not to swear that much. That's he right. would have sworn yeah. a lot if it had Michael Bay had his way probably. Because you know? then it makes it more effective when he, cause he does swear like twice at mm-hmm. the end or something like that, I think. Yeah. And that really makes it more it. effective. It's like, Oh yeah, this nerdy guy is finally like, ah, fine. I'm going to say the nerd. I'm going to say the word. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because I never really put, I never really, uh, it, it never stood out to me in that yeah. way that he was not swearing. Or do not doing it maybe on purpose. I, I never gathered that until I really read about it. So for some reason, that made it more believable for me. Mm. I don't know, but I thought it was a really good choice. And, and a lot of his, a lot of his character quirks, even like I say, changing his name came down to Nick Cage more than anything else. And Michael Bay kind of had to give him that control. Yeah, and it's 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 the it's the brilliance of him. And I think if you cast someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is like an action star, it wouldn't have worked. No. You know, it's like um, I think we did a movie. Um, I forget, but they cast like a kind of a a, a, a subdued, more uh, like laid back actor rather than a, an action star or uh, Jaws and Roy Scheider. Okay, they they yeah. wanted uh, Charlton Heston. And it's like yeah, that wouldn't have worked. Like he, you know, Charlton Heston is going to win. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to win yes. in the end. You know, you don't know if Nick Cage is going to win in this movie. Yeah, you, like when he comes up against a uh, 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 VX a VX gas, maybe, but not like <laughs> right. a soldier platoon of Marines. You know. Well, yeah. then this turns full fledged Michael Bay. Like this, this action scene is just out of this world. Like I loved it so much as a kid. From the minute Sean Connery escapes, throwing him over the ledge to do this whole car scene, I loved it. But like you truthfully cannot tell what is going on like every scene's just like ah here's that here's that here's that here's that here's that what do that like it's fucking so hard to follow in fact some of it some of it's very badly like put together uh yeah. the one in particular when when like the car the cars are all cra- i think nick cage crashes into something that crashes into something else and they're making a pile against the telephone wall. The next scene, the car just his car drives past the wreck. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, it, it's not. They didn't even try to make that look like it was gonna work. It, it's it's Michael Bay editing like one hundred and one. It doesn't have to be continuous. The continuity doesn't matter. The pace does. Yeah, That's it just has matters. to be like uh, for yeah. five minutes. Yes. Um, again, going back to one of my favorite, my favorite. Quotes or uh, comparisons of Michael Bay's editing is just like Edward Scissorhands got to do <laughs> yeah. it right, and I think it's very true. I think that this this is just hey, uh, what's our budget? How much stuff can we buy to crash into? Oh, okay, then that's what we have to work with. All right, all we right, can, we'll fit it in there. What what's let's talk about some tropes. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, how about a fruit stand? Oh, vegetables. Oh, we, yeah. All right. All right. Just throw it out there. We'll, we'll put it up on the board. Just just throw them out. 
Oh, yeah, water jugs. Yeah, It's like yeah. Cabin in the Woods. Mr. Bay? Mr. Bay? <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, two guys carrying a pane of glass. Okay, yeah, 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 for sure. For ooh, sure. ooh, one pane more. Glass. One yeah. more, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, 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 a mother with a baby carriage, but oh, it's filled with cans. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. I was going to say that. Okay, but but it's filled with cans? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's ooh, fun. I ooh, like ooh, it. I got a little tension there. Yeah, okay. a little bit. I feel like we can create our own our own new thing. Yeah. When he has to get out of the car and the airbag goes off, we'll have him shoot the airbag. Okay, but not... but. Well, we don't have a, we don't actually have um, any extra money for the rounds. That's where we ran out, so we're not actually going to make him shoot it. But yes, I love your idea. We'll, we'll blow up the airbag we'll with a gun. That. Okay, yeah. That's okay, great. great. That's great. Yeah, we're going to need some shots of them inside the car driving too. Okay, so let's do let's get that. But it's intense, so let's make the camera just right. like this the whole time. <laughs> so just put a okay camera guy in the camera path. on yeah. bungee strings yeah. inside the car. <laughs> Got it. it. It's so true. Like. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the pace and how much stuff can we run cars into and hope that it works, right? And like the that that's what I mean though about like the 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 airbag thing, Mike. You never there's never a gun noise. Really? Did you know this? No, I didn't even know. There's that. never there's never even a gun noise. It's just he puts the gun to it. Uh, and then he gets out. <laughs> and your brain does the rest. You're, yep, you just your brain Michael goes. Bay. He shot it. Cool. Yes. Honestly, uh, speaking of that, the gunshots are like all quiet in this movie for some really? reason for me. Like I, I noticed that it's a weird nitpick, but um, you're you're you know you want to shoot an action scene in San Francisco, you're gonna do it like Bullet. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do it like Steve McQueen and Bullet. Like I, you're a director, your second film. How are you not gonna do that? You know. And he does it the the most Michael Bay way, which is beautiful. Um, and then like I know that he came up with this scene his own. He wanted to add this car chase scene because he's he said it was it's for the youths. They're going to be in the theater. Ew, this is it's going it, to they're, they're the the urban youths are going to yeah. be in the theater. The urban youths. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, A two what? Like he, yeah. <laughs> and um, like he wanted it for that reason. And like we don't need it. It's like just trust me. Like people were like kind of dogging on him on being like kind of well, this is art, not commercialism. He's like, well, I'm the blender of that. I take your thirty-five million and I turn it into three hundred and thirty-five million. Yeah. So let me do it. Yeah. This is definitely one of the. This is definitely the part of the movie that where he started kind of getting behind that got him in trouble with like mm. the executives though too. I remember I I read that almost it's like for every square block that they needed or two couple of blocks they needed it was like thousands of signatures that they needed signed off from from like business owners and city oh, officials shit, and, yeah. and and uh you know workers and all this stuff and apparently it's just a nightmare and that's what got him in trouble and that's when the the kind of fame story of Sean Connery joining him mm. for the executive meeting in right. golf attire <laughs> yeah. um it's it, it just is very funny, but he he had a vision. He's like, I need this done. I love this trolley guy too. Like, <laughs> like that's man? what I'm starting to. So this is our third Michael Bay film in a, in a row. I've, <laughs> I've never watched three Michael Bay movies in a row before. Yeah, <laughs> like like we just did, and maybe that's what I'm realizing. Like we started off in Armageddon, and I was like, I don't like the how the, the he introduces these characters and then they're just gone. But like maybe that's a Michael Bay thing. Maybe that's his idea of like throw this guy in the mix let him add something to it and then it's over you know like yeah. he we, we don't we didn't have to see all these scenes of him being all nice and <laughs> i like the trolley guy's energy though because he's very nice until it's time to not be nice yeah and then he gets real mad he, <laughs> and i love this guy he swayzes it man yeah uh it's <laughs> until it's not until not, not well think nice. about the uh, think about the coen brothers in this way too like with the uh in fargo the guy explaining oh they're up in coquitlam and <laughs> you don't need it that guy like he's like the the outskirt characters they do so well but then like it adds a little it adds so much to the story yeah. i think that's what michael bay's trying to do and that's yeah. adds to the dynamics of it too right where it's like you have this very very intense car chase that chase that is going chase i was uh, doing sean <laughs> connery <laughs> car chase uh <laughs> that, that's going through town right and it's loud music and fast cars and big explosions. And then you have like, ding, ding, ding. Well, everybody, come on, yeah, come on, come on in. Let's have some fun. And it's just like everyday normal oh, life. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. I like that where it's like, oh, no, this is just a normal, beautiful San Franciscan day. Yeah. And uh, here we are. And then, it like, and then Michael Bay comes cruising through your town. I thought it was a good choice, too. I like, I like that um, Goodspeed decided to, like, do that move for yeah. John Mason because it's like he didn't mm. have to do that in front of his daughter, but he did. 
But then I also like that once his daughter's gone, he's like, you motherfucker, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, I like that a lot. I, I think he, like, it, obviously he respects him, uh, and he knows, like, that's why they added that in. Like, he, he's having a, he's expecting uh, Goodspeed's daughter, or Goodspeed is, and then he has a daughter, so he kind of empathizes with that maybe a little bit. Obviously, that's kind of what they're going for. But then Claire Forlani in our second movie, yeah, uh, right. Her only scene, yeah, and that's that was it. literally it. They couldn't cut back to her at all. <laughs> I love her. Why she not? is great. Uh, but they they almost needed this too because you need a reason later on for John Mason to care mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that's the city of San Francisco is going to get blown up. It is an important plot point. You're yeah, right. Yeah, like it, and it's and it and it's done all through. A giant action scene, <laughs> and yeah. so Michael Bay is like, "Perfect, this I'm, works out so great." I'm surprised he didn't have her stay and just like have like cut back to her randomly when like the threat of of the missile is going to come on San Francisco, and have her in like in sundresses with American flags Daddy, in no. the background saying, mm. "Daddy, no." <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> I was I was he's waiting for it. He hasn't grown up quite yet. Not to, yet. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> yet. almost there. He watched this movie and said, "Oh, damn it!" But also, she's <laughs> like, "Oh, oh, you like the or police after you? Did you escape again? Did you escape from another prison?" It's like, "Oh, thanks for uh, asking these questions and feeding me, me these exposition questions, so yes. I can tell the audience along with you as well." Mm. I can just tell, but it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to be there to walk you down the aisle. I can't even say my own name I without being charming. My own name. <laughs> Got to go now, sweetie. <laughs> AJ's going to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, absolutely useless and pointless things, can we talk about the, uh, the big camera rotation around Nick Cage after he gets out of the car? <laughs> there's not a fun thing. That, there's nothing impactful that he says. It's just the, it's the classic Michael Bay thing. It's like a Kubrick stare. Yeah. But this is a, 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 a Bay spin that he goes around the, the main character like, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like that's what they do and and then it's like you should just totaled your ferraris it's not mine <laughs> it's like <laughs> you know that they, okay you know, i you, have you, insurance uh, all right <laughs> everybody's been to a wedding recently where now instead of photo booths they have that 360 camera Yes. That's called the Michael Bay. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> it's the Michael if you look Bay. at it down in the very bottom, it's like Michael Michael Bay creation. It's the Bay of Rigs, man. <laughs> Bay of Rigs. <laughs> the Bay Bay City Spinners. <laughs> nah. nah, nah. It's getting there. Can I? I have one question right. before we move on, and it's 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 uh, about his escape. What is the rope thing in the um, in the in the shower? Uh, I believe that's maybe clothesline. Uh, like clothes. dry drying clothes maybe so you can like pull it across i used to i remember seeing those in hotels as a kid yeah i think it i think it goes all the way across the room okay and then it creates like a line that you can then hang stuff on okay okay i think okay that makes more sense to me now i i know it's a genuine question because yeah. like i i couldn't think about it i love his escape i think it's, it's genius awesome. um and I, I wanted to speak to it for a second and also the uh <laughs> stylist not barbara it's like I don't care about anything that's going on. I just want to know if you're okay, happy with your hair. <laughs> I love that so much, but I love his escape, and I think it's uh, it's a really well done. I just I was like I don't know why this rope appeared out of nowhere yeah. from the shower. <laughs> yeah, I, and so thank you for clarifying. There you go. I man. think I've seen that in like Home Alone two as well. I'm not sure, but uh, one more thing on that scene too. As someone's listening to Sinatra singing "Coming Home on a Jet Plane," or uh, uh, yeah, yeah, leaving right? on a jet leaving plane. on a jet plane. Yeah. What's and his infatuation with? that? I don't know. That's two would, movies in a row for him that have that song in it. Yeah, crazy, loved it. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> All right, scene three. With Mason's help, the team successfully intro infiltrates Alcatraz, but Hummel's men are alerted to their presence and ambush them in the shower room. Anderson and all of the SEALs are killed, leaving only Mason and Goodspeed alive. With Mason deciding to leave the island, Goodspeed must reveal the true purpose of the mission. Realizing his daughter's life is at risk, Mason agrees to stay and help. I very much enjoy that they're like, we're on the helicopters. All right, everybody, we're going dark. Cue super bright lights inside <laughs> the helicopter. Not even just bright lights, like bright blue like uh, neon-y lights. Yeah. That are definitely visible. That, and then they're like, they're literally, f like, there's a helicopter on one of the sides of the island. How, you're in the middle of the ocean, you can go, oh, there, I think there's a helicopter behind us. 
with no lights on. You can hear <laughs> helicopters are really loud. No, 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 Mike. You, you remember that's it's the rule. You don't you don't hear helicopters until you see them. Exactly. Oh, that's so right. We, we learned this from Three Ninjas. <clears throat> any cinema. If My they're God. looking out this window, they can't hear it through that window. Oh, you're so unless right. their I'm eyes so are sorry. on it, you <laughs> cannot hear it. That's what happened. <laughs> they they, they, just, they say, could have come up with a way better plan to get on this island. Michael Bay loves using comms, like communications, yeah. as exposition. Okay. Because he loves it. We saw it in Armageddon. I think we even heard it in Bad Boys. And on this, you hear it again. It's like, decoy helicopters continue breaking off. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> decoy helicopters. There's like there was three helicopters, and it's like, oh, the big one that's probably carrying people is gonna <laughs> divert, <laughs> and the two small ones are are are, are distracted. And on the island, they know they're like, there's three uh, helicopters approaching. Up, yeah. oh, one's one's disappeared. Oh, thank they God, know one's exactly going away. what that means. That means it's gone below the radar, and they should probably go look for it. You're literally <laughs> you're literally going in against. One of the noted military's <laughs> greatest tacticians. Fo follow the decoy in helicopters. History. <laughs> we got to see where they're going. He's like decoy helicopters. <laughs> I know what they're up to. They're like, they're like, no, don't worry. It's like, like General Hummel. It's like, so actually, if you guys didn't know, General Hummel was actually much older, and so it wasn't Vietnam. It was, it was actually before. Ah, uh, uh, right, 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 right. And he was, he was a general in like in the in the Civil War. <laughs> Uh, and he's yeah. like, he doesn't know what helicopters are. And he just assumed, like, oh, we're surrounded by water. It's a moat. <laughs> or it's in, it's impregnable. You can't get here. And you think you would know what the term loose cannon means. Loose oh, cannon. No, just, nope. I, no, still sorry. I just don't understand it. <laughs> he knows what a loose Gen cannon is. Gen because, but he knows it very literally. It's like, oh, shoot, this cannon's loose. <laughs> General Hummel, one of the greatest military experts of all time, a really bad judge of character. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like in Forrest Gump, where like and his daddy before him, yeah. and his daddy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I also love like I, I had to laugh. I know this probably doesn't make much sense, but they're always like you know they, you got the again with the calm thing. You have got the team back there going, uh, sir. They've entered the cistern room, mm -hmm. but I was yeah. I was just assuming that this was basically like the name of a room in the Legends of the Hidden Temple. Like, <laughs> It's like the, the purple parents have entered the sister room. <laughs> like I couldn't. I, I just saw the map of it. <laughs> Evil picture, just like the a, purple parents. An, an some inside, dumbass kid. Some inside kid who was good at the questions at <laughs> the beginning. Kid. And he's like, I don't know how I got here. I don't know what I'm doing. And he here. dies in a furnace. <laughs> he's got huge bottle Coke bottle glasses it's on. It's just a skeleton with a purple parrot shirt and glasses on. <laughs> the, the silver snakes have entered the sister room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a temple guard. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh, temple guards got him. Sean Connery confirms. Yeah. Uh, and you got it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, in, while they come up in the sister room, it's like yes. some of the shots are great. Fucking awesome. Obviously, it's like an Apocalypse Now kind of ripoff, but it's it's another uh, 1.5 second shot of them coming up <laughs> yeah. out of the water. It took two hours badass. to set up. Right. <laughs> if anybody wrote a book about your life, would anybody want to read it? Join the army. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is, man. Man, they needed Keith David here. They needed Could've Keith had David, him, man. But explain this. Explain this whole furnace room thing. Like, is this badass? Hell, yes, it is. But mm -hmm. like, why? First of all, why is it still running? <laughs> Dude, ask. the flame obstacle. <laughs> The flame obstacle gear thing looks like it's a man-made like trap. It is. It's not a working furnace. It's like, oh, let's just do half a turn there, and let's have this flame go that way, this flame go that way. That's not how furnace It's like a Metal work. Gear Solid level you have to get through. This isn't fucking Indiana Jones. I know that I know that Sean Connery was there for that, too, but this ain't it, okay? It's not. You're right. This looks like, it, it, like it's a trap. Set for somebody that got triggered. But are you ready for me to blow your mind? Please. I'm going to destroy your childhood. <laughs> One-eyed Willie's at it again. Shit. I'm going to destroy your childhood. So Mason's there. He's counting the timer, and he's like, "I'm, I'm remember, I'm remembering the timer." And and he goes, <coughs> he goes through it, and then they're like, "He's disappeared. Where is it?" And then he comes back, and he just opens a door. When he escaped, he would have come from the other side. Couldn't he have just opened the door? God damn it. Oh my God. He was coming the opposite way, you guys, when he actually escaped the prison. Why was, why, <laughs> why? No, 
was it the door? Why is there a door? Flames. <laughs> fly, fa- fly face. Gears. There's just the a flames. door. There's just a shitty wooden door right next to the furnace. <laughs> You're right. Like, why is that the door that was the, the access? And that, and it only opened from the side John Mason actually came from when he escaped the prison. <laughs> he was escaping. But you know what? Someday I might come back here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn the ins and outs of this flame gear trap. Oh, oh my god! I yeah. need I need like five minutes of silence to process <laughs> this. To I'm try, so sorry. Try to give it something because it's Sean Connery. That's the only Welcome reason. Welcome to the Rock, dude. Oh god! It wasn't Tarantino's inclusion. I know that. I, I just know that. So when he left, did he say thank you for visiting the Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Come back again. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. It's like, a, it's like there's a there's a there's a sign like a town sign says thanks for visiting. With the shotgun holes yeah. in it. <laughs> Population ticks down one. <laughs> oh. oh God. What about Damn so it, what Mike. about this shot? What about this shower scene? Like it's it's this is pretty this is a pretty heart wrenching scene. It still got me. It's very tough. Yeah. Um one thing before this, <clears throat> I, I know Sean Connery says uh uh, maybe I'm losing my sex appeal. Shex I'm like, appeal. no, you're not. No, bullshit. <clears throat> but yeah, the bullshit. No. It's like it's like a uh, it's it's a good good harrowing scene, and it's like very uh, well done, like well yeah. like well tensioned uh, from Michael to Bay. the nines. Yeah, man. yeah, he squeezes every bit out of it that he can, and I I like it a lot. I and you know we get this very again <clears throat> like very human moment between these two leaders, mm-hmm. and he says, and even this the seal. Commander says, "Like James I, Bean, Bine, Bine, Bean, Bean, uh, yeah, Jean, or uh, Michael Bean, uh, Bean, Bean, Michael Bean, Michael Bean, Michael, Michael Bean, Bean. <laughs> it's Michael Bean, okay. <laughs> Michael Bean, uh, uh, Kyle Reese. <laughs> yes. I'll just solve this. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Oh, cripes. Uh, yeah, Terminator One, guys. Anyways, aliens. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I really like this interaction between me. He's like, he's like, I, I understand. God knows, I agree with you, but I this do. is not the way to do it. So, and he's so." Just, He's the better soldier, really, is what it is. Like, I fucking agree with you. We could probably figure it out in a better way than this. And it's it's just like somebody somebody else is sitting there next to him, just like everyone's thinking it. Over. He's just saying it. Like you're you're basically a psycho at this mm-hmm. point. You, I know you, I know you're upset. Like, and you've exhausted all your options. This is not the way. You guys swore an oath, yeah. and I swore an oath. Enemies. Both foreign, foreign and, and domestic. domestic, and you're like, man. He even said, I don't know if you read this, Sean. Like, uh, he's played he's played Navy SEALs or some variation mm-hmm. of them in like every movie he's been in, some yeah, sort of space military one guy. and Aliens. Yeah, uh, he grew he grew really unsure of himself when he was acting in this movie because a lot of those guys were real Navy SEALs. Mm-hmm. And he said he was telling Michael Bay he was freezing up, pretending to be a leader in front of actual seals, and then Sean Connery being being just standing there watching him. No kidding. And I thought he did a great job. I thought he was perfect in this role. Yeah, I, I everything that he really does is is amazing. I I his their back and forth is is really great, but it's also like very climactic and and uh, like Michael Bay e when the whole thing does collide and crash. Obviously, they start shooting each other. Uh, the music is just like swells up and like a big emotional kind of thing. I imagine just like a American flag fell off the pole somewhere in America <laughs> oh, yeah. at that point um, in Michael Bay's head. But they're just they're like, I'm not gonna give that order. I will not give that order. Well, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna give that <laughs> order. <laughs> ah, ah! Order your man to stand down. I'm not gonna order my man to stand down. Give the order. I will not give the order. <laughs> Yikes. I think you gotta I think you gotta hit this. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> oh. That's what I'm talking about. I struggled with this one, but I think upon rewatch I figured out who it was. I think it, it's gonna either be Captain Fry or Captain Dar Darrow. Yeah. It's gotta be one of those two. And I thought it was gonna be Darrow, which is Tony Todd. But I think at this moment you see Captain Fry, like it looks like he purposely mm. pushes that brick off. Yeah. It, it, it's not clear. And as a kid, you figured, oh, no, he accidentally hit that because he was nervous. I think because he's like, come on, let's waste these motherfuckers or something like that. And he purposely pushes that brick down so that it makes a loud noise. So they start mm. killing. Yeah. So I'm going Captain Fry. Captain I think Fry. I think he's got to be the one. I'm Hands with down. him. Looks like a frog. I don't know. For some reason, he looks, yeah. just looks like a frog. He, he's actually been in a couple. Um, we'll have to consult the... Uh, Jared Layoff uh, oh, okay. fan. I think he was been in at least another movie of ours. He looks like 
David Patrick Kelly, who was uh, the bottle guy in the Warriors. He looks like he could lick his own eyes. (laughs) 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 And and didn't didn't you just try so hard as a boy? (laughs) You know, is that what you tried hard to do? What? Never mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I, again, there's something, there's something about this that um, (laughs) it's (laughs) it's dark humor to me. And I, I think of it, it's when they're trying to defuse or like uh, diffuse the sensor. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's explaining it the whole time. He's like, I'm going to use mirrors. <laughs> I'm going to bounce this thing, bounce the thing back onto itself. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. And then yeah. I'm going to, then I'm going to ease in. <laughs> 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 you're like crazy. He's like, got it. <laughs> you got it. Pull it up. <laughs> Pull it up. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok, please make it happen. Do it right now. TikTok, make it happen, please. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, it's like he's just his absolute sure success. Yep. He's just like, did it. Got it. Yes. <laughs> And of course, the exposition from earlier was like, yeah, this is not even a, no one even knows about this extra. They think they're going to do the laser, but then they're going to change the thing. We're going to go right away. Heck yeah, dude. I bet that'll come back up. I wonder if that'll come back around. (laughs) I just like after the whole dramatic shower thing, I wanted uh, Hummel to come in there and and, like do the the Michael Bay spinorama and be like, Shit just got real. The shit just got real. Oh, I wanted it so bad. What's or, Martin Lawrence doing here? Yeah. <laughs> or what if, you know, he hasn't worn glasses the whole movie, but what if just for that scene, <laughs> he had glasses and he went, oh my oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> and then he never has glasses again. I would have liked that. Uh, he takes his contacts out when he goes and takes naps. <laughs> yeah. He has glasses on. All right, so scene four, Mason and Goodspeed eliminate several teams of Marines and disable 12 of the 15 rockets by removing their guidance chips. Hummel threatens to execute a hostage if they don't surrender and return the chips. Mason destroys them before surrendering to Hummel to try reasoning with him and stall for time. While disabling another rocket, Goodspeed is captured. I just, uh, like, every time they cut back to um, uh, Womack and uh, William Forsythe's character, By the way, Nick Cage and William Forsyth back we together. Haven't, I was say, we haven't talked about William Forsyth much yet at all. And I, there's something about his character that I love in this movie. He is, he's not an imposing figure, but somehow he plays. I think this is his his niche mm-hmm. is a tough guy, kind of hard ass, almost top middle management kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, but supportive. And uh, and willing to probably give you a hug some at some point, <laughs> right? He's like he's right, a, yeah. he's a tough love kind he of does, guy. Yeah. He's like you got to get your ass out there and you got to take care of it. Don't worry about your girlfriend. I'll make sure she's safe. Okay, everybody's gonna be happy. I love you. You need to go take care of you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Always happy. I'm Bill Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> but but like mustache co- coming from like them together in raising Arizona. He is such a bombastic, like weirdo character in that movie, and then he's such a serious, well suited. Like, oh my, like that, that is crazy. I don't know why he's not in everything ever made. I feel like he looks a lot different in this movie too. Like, he's yeah. changed his appearance quite a bit. Like, he looked kind of a little bit more chubbier in Raising Arizona. Yeah, kind yeah. of. He had like a gap in it his. It was teeth. that mustache. That Talk mustache maybe. hides a lot. Talk about kind of a just another chameleon, and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put him up there necessarily like Gary Oldman but have is there a movie out there that exists where they're in it together sure hope so that would be awesome I think because you're right raising Arizona Arizona to a role like this very very different voice is very different appearance is very different everything Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's great man I love how uh Stanley Goodspeed how he's just such a nerd and he and he feels so out of his element and like I need a gun I don't know what I'm doing and oh my god like let you guys do all the hard stuff once he gets around chemical weapons, he's a fucking tough guy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, back the fuck up. I know what I'm doing. And he's Do like, Do not move that. <laughs> all of a sudden, he's like, unbelievable. It's like, it's so cool because it's like if you if you were the if you know the most about something in a room of people, you become the alpha. Yeah. And he has not been the alpha this entire movie until like, okay, now I'm the alpha. And it's so <laughs> awesome. He plays it so well. To to be able to watch him <laughs> actually kind of do that, you know. You want you want you always want your main you know guy your main good guy almost I know it's kind of a split thing but you want him to be like the tough guy who shoots guns a lot mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? Like, you want that. We don't really see him shoot a gun almost ever. No. In fact, he does. He, he does think, the um. What movie did we do? Where uh, uh, f- first time you ever plucked someone? What movie was that? Oh uh, no, that that was a uh, big big trouble. Yeah, that's or right. China. So th- he does this in that movie or in this movie. Where I think it's oh, the, that's the, right. Where the the trolleys under like the yes. the cave trolleys or whatever that scene. He, oh yeah, so he, he shoots someone shoot and him. he's like, shit. Yeah, like you know, he's he's new to this. He's never done that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. So we do see him do that, but it's very foreign to him. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and the moment he gets in front of this, and he is commanding Sir Nicholas. <laughs> or <laughs> Sir Nicholas. Yeah, Sir the, the, Sean Connery they have completely point. flipped. 100%. Sean Connery is like, described what this actually does, and it's like, oh my God, I can't, oh God. I can't. Uh. And even those two look menacing. Like the prop <laughs> department did a, such a killer job with just the fucking green balls. Delicate. My like, good God. He says, Ooh, here's a prop. Man, something about the color of those <laughs> balls. Is it weird that I love the way those things look? Like, I want one. All I just right. want one on the shelf. You just VX want one gas. single ball? One single ball. What about v- like a, on like a, a string no, of them? Like I don't a chandelier. want the pearls, and I don't want them to sound like they do, like a wind chime when they go back and forth. I just want them. one ball right there. Okay. The ball, and it's it's going to be in like one of those baseball things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> right next to the Babe Ruth oh, ball. Someone <laughs> please make that happen. Oh, oh, man. What do I want? It's tough. I, I had one, um, but I... I don't know. I want the I want a, I want the syringe that he uses. Ooh, mm. the, the used syringe. The used one. Okay. Yes. Let's go. Let's let's go. That uh, Beatles record. Oh, Nick Cage's Beatle rec- Beatles sounds record. Sounds sounds better. Oh, oh sounds so much. Sounds better. way better. Only because I don't know which one he chose, but I want either the glass jar or the plastic bag that Captain Fry ended up in. How about that? Mm. Can I do that? Okay. 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 Yeah. Hey. Glass or plastic? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> glass or plastic? Glass or plastic? <laughs> one of the one of the best interactions of the movie, I think, and made me laugh the hardest is when uh, Stanley Goodspeed's like, "Well, what about Mister Henderson's head?" And Sean Connery turns around and just goes, <laughs> "He just thumbs up." <laughs> well, then, well, wait, well, okay, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, like he does. Okay. He has our reaction. The audience, like <laughs> Sean Goddard, is like, I don't have time for this. Yeah, thumbs up. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> yes, I'm glad people, you brought that up. People do that to me all the time. I'm like, well, what about this? What about this? They're like, whatever you want, dude. Yep, sure, it'll all work out. It's I just, was very specific about my question, though. So it's like when I ask Molly, I'll be like. Hey, what time are you off, and what do you want to eat? Yes. Like, I asked you two <laughs> questions. Sure. What is going on here? Sounds good. What? Okay. <laughs> I love that interaction so yeah, much. It's good. Uh, uh, I, I just like how much Nick Cage uh, or, or Goodspeed is just out of his element and borderline fumbling through these things, how he's distracted by the twitching leg. is Oh, you're just... Uh, that air conditioner is falling on oh, that guy? No thanks, man. It would be... It would be a very distracting thing while he's sitting there. And man, by the way, he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna walk you through." In the in the beginning, before they leave on this mission, he's like, "I want to. I need to be debriefing your guys and walking them through these uh, these missiles. It's a very complex thing, <laughs> and uh, these rockets. You know, the guidance systems themselves are gonna be a whole another a whole another beast." And he gets in there. He's like, "Okay, pull out the pearls, <laughs> guidance chip, click." <laughs> And uh, it's like, that was a pretty fucking easy thing to do. And then what if Stanley Goodspeed dies, uh, like, right upon getting on the island? Instead of talking everyone <laughs> through this and saying, and doing like, okay, everybody gather around, all right? I'm going to make this real simple. And uh-huh. it'd be like a stick figure thing. This is what it would be, guys. It'd be like, all right, guys, this is what a missile looks like. It looks like just like a little like, yep. firework. Yep. It's like, there's a missile. Take off the, take. you're going to take it out of the middle. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to see probably some green balls. Ooh. Okay. All right? That's bad. Don't touch that. Don't touch the green balls. Okay. And Gloves what will are make the it blue okay. balls? Blue balls are your own problem. <laughs> That's mighty, a little mighty, fun joke. Mighty ducks. No big deal. <laughs> fun chemist joke there. Pizza? <laughs> 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 yeah, there's gonna be. You want to make sure you go around the green balls. Okay. 
Okay. Are these balls like fragile? We don't want to break Incredibly. these. Incredibly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do not break the balls. Don't break my balls. Okay. Any- Remove the balls. <laughs> He's a fucking nerd. <laughs> There's going to be a guidance chip in the bottom. Pull, Pull out, out the guidance chip. Put the bunny <laughs> down. And then you're going to put the rockets, then you're going to put the rocket back together as if nothing else ever happened. Which also makes no sense cuz then they're still going to shoot it off. It's still going to go somewhere. <laughs> they still Why don't you just leave like, it now, now they just can't. Now it's going to come back on the island. Like I don't know. They could still even just like take one of the ball or like a lot of them and just start throwing them towards San Francisco. <laughs> they just See how far they can get. <laughs> just start throwing like water balloons. <laughs> I'll come back to that. But that's the thing. It's like, why didn't we have this moment where it's like, hey, guys, gather around. This is how you dismantle these rockets. We need to take out the guidance chip. That's really all that needs to happen. And then these things are essentially we've kind of saved it from whatever needed to happen. Why don't right? we just train some 500 astronauts? Feet, they splash down. Why don't we just train some <laughs> astronauts no, to no. drill a hole on the asteroid? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Shut the fuck okay. up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. But, this, but that's that's it. It's so right. simple. And it raises the question like I I hate that that the the answer is clear that this this general saying you you need to make right what some of the men who served your country are for. Otherwise, I'm going to kill a million people on American soil unless you give me money from an, an illegal slush fund that the government has that no one knows about and cares. Mm-hmm. Movie over. Here's your money. Like, what, how is this the, the decision that is made? Why is this a bad thing? To, well, to, to then to, to make the decision to kill 81 like pe- people? <laughs> has that ever happened? <laughs> has that ever, have we ever like knowingly killed? Because then you're going to have to report on don't, it. Like, don't ask that question. Okay, fine. Sorry. Because, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. Oh my God! We're now go now our video, now our YouTube video is demonetized. No, no, no. We'll cut that. We are. We uh, are we're gonna, gonna cut, cut that. that. Uh, we're gonna why? cut that. That was great. <laughs> no. Do you know our 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 Burt Kreischer YouTube episode is not monetized because of probably all. The oh the great! Where we talked about that. Remember? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh shoot. And they were. Inside okay. Inside baseball. And I just. Know. And they were just. Uh. Well. What I was going to say is, you are completely right. We, you just, you just gave them this decision. Hey, we're gonna kill eighty-one people, or else, or San Francisco. We're gonna, we're gonna basically bomb San Francisco. No, they, no, they or made, else. No, they made up the. There was two options: give us the money, or a million people die. Correct. And the, and the typical American government goes well. What about option C, where we kill 81 people and don't give any money It's a out. little bit better. <laughs> it's a little bit better. And we keep our slush fund. Well, I hear that tour guide's really funny. Dude, oh, I love slushies, We need to get though. him Bob, out of dude. there. We got to get Bob out of there. We need to get Bob out of there. And, oh, and by the way, what happened when, when uh, Ed Harris tells the two little girls, like, hey, you need to get back on the boat now? How did that conversation go when two little girls are like, hey, some man came up and said we need to leave right now? They, Do you they just grab leave? their mom and then he's like, "No, no, your mom's staying." She said, uh, <laughs> "She's good collateral." Wow. She, they, I think he said, uh, "You need to go tell your teacher that you need to leave the island now." Yeah. And then the teacher is probably like, <laughs> "All right, <laughs> Annie, Nicole, Ainsley, just, hey, Ainsley, Paisley." <laughs> <laughs> no, this is ninety three. That's yeah. No, that's this, right. is, this, this is our sorry ninety six. <laughs> Rachel, Monica, <laughs> Ashley, Mary Kate. <laughs> <laughs> we can go all day, boy. <laughs> Look, if you need to go potty, we will find a bathroom. And then she looks up and then get, like sees like makes eye contact with Ed Harris, who has glasses on, and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> We're off the fucking rails. I know, my God. but you're right. Okay, I just okay. wanted to make this point We're quick. Never okay, get through the we'll rock. Never get through. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the rock, <laughs> it, where it never ends. But you're you're right. Like he he has given them ultimatums, and it's like he says, "Look, we've got." VX rockets, and we're, we're going to hit San Francisco. We also have 81 hostages that we can, could probably willingly execute at any time, or else. And they're like, or else what? <laughs> Unless you pay for veterans 
families and their and and care for the the aftermath of what happened to these these American heroes. That's it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I mean, I mean, that's fine. Was that okay? We can can we do that, guys? I, yeah, that's in our budget for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I guess. Hey, uh, General Hummel, we appreciate you bringing this to light. Like what? That's the worst <laughs> thing that could have happened. Honestly, we didn't even think about any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we didn't know what happened. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. We oh were God, unaware that the previous administration from the other party that we hate was responsible for that. We will make that right, and we will make this a publicity thing. Ooh, I think, commentary. I think Ooh. the problem is is that basically um, Ed Harris uh, pulled a fast food restaurant. Would you like to donate to our charity that we're supporting <laughs> by saying, and the rest of the money we're going to do as we please. That's what he basically did. Yep. It's like, oh, uh, we're going to give a million dollars or so many, so much money to the, yep. the people, but then we're going to take the money and we're going to do whatever we want with it. Yes. I think that, that was, was where the they issue. had the problem. That's where it comes back. They had the issue. <laughs> well, didn't you say the president <laughs> is the same as the Armageddon president? That's correct. Who, what, what was his name? Stanley Anderson? Is that right? Sure. I, <laughs> is this the same universe, do you think? Okay. Which means Let's that, go. that this president beat Bill Clinton's re-election campaign mm. in 1996, actually, came mm. into office and had to deal with this right away. This is like day one of him being the president. Damn. So he got through this, ended Ugh. up getting a lot of cred. Two years later, a world-ending asteroid comes, and he fixes that. So you best believe this man getting reelected in 2000. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he's going to be. They may just call him permanent president. I just was going to say. I think, I think they pull a Putin with this guy and <laughs> yeah. just let him just be president. Yeah. Same universe. Yeah. Same universe. I'm in that. It was a rough line. Not late 90s were rough for us. <laughs> you know? A lot of people say it was the cultural mecca of the world, but I think it was rough. Hey, look. Grunge was the Grunge. thing. Grunge. All right. Yeah. Seattle. <laughs> Final scene, you guys. Mason and Goodspeed escape their cell. Hummel's urged by his men to fire a rocket. Although he does, he redirects it to detonate at sea. Darrow and Fry mutiny against him and kill him. As the jets approach, Godspeed Goodspeed disables the rocket before killing Darrow and Fry. One jet accidentally drops a bomb before Goodspeed is rescued but survives. Mason reveals the location of the microfilm as he and Goodspeed part ways. Sometime later, Goodspeed and his newlywed wife, Carla, hastily drive away from a church in Kansas av after having retrieved the microfilm. So as these uh, uh, jet planes are getting scrambled and ready to go to... Uh, Alcatraz to drop this stuff, and then you know it's all dramatic. Like like at it, this reminds me so much of Armageddon. Yes. This whole like build up scene where it's like the jets are getting and and Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor, which is horrible. Whoa. But uh, uh, it's it, you get the trademark uh, uh, backlit sun uh, American flag and the and you know ready to go guys <laughs> in the fucking cockpit and shit. It's just. Pure trademark bay. If we're doing Maya Bank, I, we, I have to run through the. This gambit. is your last chance to yes. tell us what you feel about Michael Bay. I mean, this is where it works the best. Yes, and uh, I love it. We'll, we'll get to the end, but uh, it works because it is mostly just the Blue Angels, anyway. <laughs> stock footage. <laughs> it's just stock footage. Is it really? Yeah, it's just stock footage. Most you can of it tell was. at one point that they're like Blue Angels, and they're <laughs> trying to hide it with the tint of the of the film. It's like, oh, those are the Blue Angels. See that? They carry rockets. <laughs> no, they don't. That's no. why we're doing this. <laughs> apparently, uh, by the way, apparently Jim Caviezel is one of the like he's I like a that. secondary what? pilot. Yeah, it's like so so you know, <laughs> Jesus take the wheel. Uh, like you got <laughs> wow. this is just just too much. I saw that and I was like, that is the most strange credit. Just uh, F eighteen co pilot, not even like with a lead guy. Yep. I don't think just a weird credit. Well, so does this like he fires the rocket and then to his credit he changes the coordinates and it crashes in the ocean. Sure. Does this still not create an end of the world scenario where the ocean, the forty five VX gas things explode in the ocean? Yeah, I don't like, know. This is the ocean's fucked forever at this point, right? Yeah. Which then fucks the planet from here on out. Like, do you just go? Do you just like stab the water with the antidote? Yes. Yeah. You just go up to him and be like, Ugh. I think you, you take it, you take it like the syringe, and you just go, it's and that's what happens. It's much like you Armageddon, the where water. they're like, yeah, we did it. But then they don't talk about the aftermath of <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> the tidal waves and the other asteroids. This is like, we did it. Oh, sir, the ocean is fucked. Like, like almost immediately, like 10 <laughs> minutes later, like dolphins and fucking yes, sharks yeah. and other fish are just coming up dead. Everything is just, yeah, floating to the top. And it's like just because it went in the water doesn't mean it, can become, it can't become airborne. 
True. There has to be a point. There, there has to be something that we missed where they say that water neutralizes no. the VX gas. That was signs. <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. I always get these two movies confused. M. Night, Michael Bay. Ooh. Swing away, The Rock. Michael Ooh. Night Shyamalan Bay. Uh, <laughs> Stop it. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> no, like, I, I swear, like, there had to have been something. I know he says, and they'll splash down into the water, and everything is fine. But they say, like, a teaspoon of this hits yes. the ground. Everything within 100 feet dies. Yes. I don't understand. Hmm. I, I don't. I, I don't think that that's a good... I think that's a missing thing if we missed it, if yeah. we overlooked this. I really do like this uh, scene of like the company becoming undone with like the Tony Todd and yeah. the Punchable Face guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just being... Yeah, like... Captain Friday. Being mercenaries beyond mercenaries. Mm. Mercenaries of the mercenary group that they're in. The day we took hostages, we became mercenaries. mercenaries. I want my I fucking, fucking money. money. Uh, Stand down, Captain. <laughs> I love that. The whole, the so whole much. double cross. <laughs> it was pretty got, good. Yeah, that's it's double tight. cross to double cross. Yeah. Um love it. Yeah, I, I just I like that. I, I like that a lot. And I like Ed Harris's kind of exit in this movie too. I, I feel so sorry for him. I man. do, I do too. It's a very conflicting feeling, and I like having that feeling about this character a lot. And it adds adds a lot to the movie to me. Yeah. As mm-hmm. we've been saying. But uh, yeah, his exit is 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 pretty glorious. And it, you, yeah, you th- oh, sorry. You just no, I, I just think you think about where he. I, I love thinking about it this way. You think of where he started as a Medal of Honor, very highly awarded yeah. Brigadier General of the Marine Corps, very well respected, and then he just dies just up against a wall, slumped against a wall in Alcatraz. You know, as a, yeah. as a treason, as a man a, of treason. Yep, yeah, who will who will basically be wiped away? Yes. at this point. Mm-hmm. My, my my one thing that I wish would have happened in this is Nick Cage gets the guy to bite on the on the VX gas, which then instantly deforms this guy and starts getting ready to break his back. You know, in the in the 30 seconds or so before Nick Cage is able to get away and put this in him, something would have happened to him. Yes. Like his face would have started to yeah. boil over. His could would have popped a couple vertebrae on and right. like his ha- shoulder would have come out of his socket. I like to think that that would have happened, and then he would have been like, Carla, I made it out alive, but look at me. I'm not pretty anymore. And she's like, I, I, I would have liked to have seen that scene. The dude doesn't even roll an ankle <laughs> no. getting away from it. Like, <laughs> he doesn't get blown up from the from the, the gas that hits the no. thing and knocks him into the he ocean. He knows exactly how far he's got to be away. He knows he knows that that's it's, it's tam- he, there's saliva on the mouth, so the water tampers are down. That's, oh. that's what we didn't know. He's not telling us that. Mm. You know, <sighs> shit like that. I have to say also, too, uh, the demise of uh, Tony Todd. Is maybe the corn- oh yes. corniest. Is this maybe the most forced gotcha yes. line yes. Uh, in cinema? Well, I only ask because it's you. You're the Rocket Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like, listen to that Elton John Rocket Man yeah, soft ass shit. Big fan of music. Soft-ass shit. Yeah. Oh hey, remember we uh he likes music. Let's bring that back. <laughs> oh, writing. It's you. It's you. You're the rocket man. <laughs> Pretty gruesome death, though. Dude. Yeah. Uh, gets shot out. It's just fucking Michael Bay. You get shot out by a rocket out of the window. That rocket goes wherever the fuck, and you get impaled on a spike. Yeah. And apparently, you c- fucking awesome. Apparently, you just hit a button next to the rocket, and it takes off. That's what happens. Yeah. Because you don't yeah. need the whole command center thing. You could just have a guy that goes, yep. 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 Yeah, that's how those work. <laughs> it's like those kids' toys that you step on, and it goes. <laughs> and it shoots it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're right. It was already pumped up. <laughs> I do. He has another Ugh. great line too, where he's he's like, "You know how this shit works," and he throws a knife at him. He's like, "You know how that shit works?" It's oh, fucking awesome. Yeah, My God, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do you guys think about? It? It's pretty widely known that. There's a theory out there that John Mason is actually James Bond. Mm-hmm. I was hoping we would get to this. Well, and and so like it's it's easy to debunk this, but I did dive pretty deep into this to find as much information as I could to make this true. Okay. So in in uh, Sean Connery was James Bond for many years. In 1962, he was James Bond in Doctor No. Took place in 1962. Right after that took place, he was arrested on an unsuccessful mission in the U.S. trying to retrieve microfilm. U.S. put him in Alcatraz, but he escaped six months later and was back to work 
for on for, uh, from Russia with Love, which took place in 1963. At the beginning of the movie, uh, which is from Russia with Love, Sylvia Trench berates James for ignoring her for six months. It was the love interest from Doctor No and Russia with Love. He was gone for six months. What happened there? Hmm. Was he in Alcatraz? We know he escaped. In 1971, his last official Bond film came out, Diamonds Are Forever. After that, he returned to the U.S. and actually stole the film because JFK and Hoover deaths had finally happened at that point. Mm. He stole the film, hid it in the church with authorities in pursuit. He was arrested and permanently sent to prison until this film took place at that, at that point. We know he was a highly trained SAS operative, British forces, professional escape artist, but James Bond was. He got out of a lot of things on this. Um, in the scene in the interrogation room where FBI agent Goodspeed introduces himself to John Mason, John replies, but of course you are. Mm. That was the same line he used in Diamonds Are Forever, which he had just gotten done doing. Also, Mason's daughter reveals he was con- she was conceived after a one-night stand. That is a very James Bond thing to do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the theory that every James Bond is James Bond. You know, so like it's a different person that is just called James Bond. Mm. Right. So right. that's why his real name is John Mason. Because anyone who is 007 is James Bond mm. until they're not anymore. So he he got caught in America. The the British Secret Service went right on to the next one, and he was forgotten forever in prison. And I was thinking to myself too that the movie goes out of out of its way to to say that he was a British many times. British and Sean Connery is is a very deep, you know, like Irish. Uh, Scottish. Scottish right. Right. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Scottish, right. yeah. Get that confused all the time. But yeah, like I was I was just waiting for the movie to be like, yeah, Scottish. Whatever trained whatever. forces, yeah, you know, but they went out of their way British. to say British, yeah. Huh. I yeah. like to think I know that you could easily disprove that, but I like to think that. Like I never thought of that as a kid, but that is a fun way to view this movie. It is kind of fun, right? Yeah. Can we? Was can, that fun? I think it, we, I um, like it. Can we? Uh, can we? St- I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna ask for this, guys. Can we just stamp that and just make it so? Yeah. And we will say uh, for social media, whoever we will just die on that rock. Yeah. Literally. Uh, we're just gonna be like, this is it, and that is fact. That's James Bond. You heard it here, and it is now fact. Fact. No matter undisputable, cannot be disputed. It is that's an what that word fact. means. Yes. All right, then. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we give some modern uh, day I ratings? Just, I just love the iconic shot of uh, Nick Cage with the flares. Oh. I like. I remember seeing that in like the tri- the like the commercials for the movie, like on TV and stuff. And I remember those even being longer. Yeah, like that shot yeah. being longer. They had, like, to, they had like, to lengthen it for commercial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wheel and Michael Bay. Sure, like, the trailer's uh, only five seconds long. <laughs> like, it's snappy. It's not snappy enough. <laughs> um, that's uh, yeah. That's about all I got. That is a fucking cool shot. I yeah. do like that thing. Well, yeah. and I think I think it's important to note uh, the the uh, final ending of it is him finding the yeah. microfilm in the leg uh, at that that pew in Kansas or yep. wherever. Um, I do think that that's really fun. Michael Bay did have an idea for a oh, sequel. Oh, come on. Get into this, yeah. And it was supposed to be about how he did find it, and now he was actually on the run from the FBI and CIA, and then he had to eventually find John Mason again and ask for help. I would have done that. I like that. And then he has to steal the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) By the way, that's all I could think of. (laughs) Like, I know that, who was it? Who was again who did music? Uh, Hans uh, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer couldn't make up his mind, or Michael Bay took to editing his music himself because that music could not make up its mind throughout this whole thing and it sounded dun, dun, dun. at points dun, 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 dun. I was like are you trying to be Pirates of the Caribbean or National Treasure just yeah. let me know it's also got a lot of dun, 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 dun. speed yeah. A, B, C, D <laughs> I'm done alright boys we have dissected this with a modern eye it's time to give it a modern day rating Sean let's start with you man what do you think about this okay Um. yeah I fucking love this movie i think it's it's super goddamn fun um the cast is incredible i love seeing all the a actors obviously like the main cast ed harris sean connery nick cage and then the b characters the b actors i really like like william forsyth and uh uh, michael bean i think they all do an uh, incredible job i think this is my favorite michael bay movie i think it's his best movie um, I could watch this literally any day of the week, any night. This is like a kind of go to bed movie for me, you know, just put this on and it's like a warm blanket. Um, you know, and, and that, that being said, there's, it's, it's, it's a cheesy ass action movie where it's not like, a, you know, it's not 
what you would consider like a Citizen Kane masterpiece. But of these action movies, it's pretty fucking great. Uh, I'm going to stay an eight. Damn. AJ, what about you, man? I, uh, I I think I really agree with Sean on a lot of this stuff. I think it's uh, this is a movie. I think this is a rare thing, actually, anymore, where you where you're completely fine with um, saying you're going to watch this movie and you'll go even as far as to make yourself some popcorn to, to watch it at home um, or even just throw it on whenever so you can go to bed. Um, I think it fits both of those profiles very well. Uh, I wanted uh, my friend James is going to watch this movie with me. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do it, but I was, oh, yeah, it, it was one said. of those things. <laughs> can I, I was, watch that with you? <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like, dude, absolutely, you can because I'd be ex- excited to watch it with with James or fr- like friends, you know, and like make plans to like watch this movie and and have some fun while while we do that, right? Um, so I I think it's an incredibly re- rewatchable movie. Um, I wish I could have found it anywhere else other than like kind of an. Uh, what was an FX movies version of it? Borderline. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but uh, I do know that like that that knife throw like through the neck of that dude was like taken out in some versions of it. Luckily, yeah. it was in mine. I don't know. There was some. It was in mine. There was another knife stab through the hand that got ejected oh, from the movie right. too. Like, but that that all being said, right? It's so much fun to watch. It's a it's an incredibly fun movie to watch if you can just detach a little bit, just in, uh, allow yourself to to. Uh, just let it wash over you, right? Uh, with everything that Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery has to offer in this movie, right? And then, of course, Ed Harris, who is the pinnacle of Hollywood military. <laughs> I really love this movie. What did you give this, Sean? Eight. An eight. <clears throat> I am going to give this... Um, God, I really love watching this movie, guys. I am going to give this... I'm going to give this an 8.45. Nice. <laughs> I, I think this is Michael Bay's best movie, too. I really, really enjoyed Armageddon, and I think this is slightly better. <clears throat> maybe like maybe not as funny as Armageddon was, but just a better overall put-together movie. Mm. I love the the plot line of the, like, the, the antagonist is like, he's maybe doing the right thing here. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And Sean, Sean Connery will go down in history as one of the greatest most beloved actors of all time. RIP, what, a couple years ago, I think, for him. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, 2020, I maybe, I think it was. I, I love it. I Molly was watching this with me, and she goes, is not is that guy a good actor? And she's talking about Nick Cage. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Molly, I don't know. I don't know. But I sure do fucking love him. That's and right. I go, what do you think? She goes, no. I go, that's fine. Yeah, It's kind of like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> that's the right answer. That. Yeah, it's yeah. Nick Cage yeah. and Keanu Reeves. Are like, you're like, I don't know if they're doing this, this on blessed. purpose, but they're doing so good at it yes. that I love them for yes. it. Yes. I, I love this movie. I'm going to call it I'm gonna call it a 7.59, which is slightly better than my Armageddon rating. Nice. Executive producer Bud Larson said, I watched this on Voodoo. I like movies and documentaries about Alcatraz. I remember this is a Michael Bay movie, so there are going to be tons of explosions, like when John Mason runs into a car and then runs into a telephone pole. That's the one I was talking about. (laughs) So telephone wires on the ground automatically means cars blowing up. Or when the trolley started sideswiping about 15 parked vehicles, then when it came to the bottom of the hill, it just exploded 20 feet in the air for no reason. (laughs) Makes perfect sense. I've said before I'm also a gun guy. I thought it was weird that the SEALs used different variations of MP5 chambered in 9mm and 12-gauge pump shotguns, while the Marines were firing 5.56 NATO M16s and CAR 15s and 7.62 by 51 NATO M60 E2 machine guns. I believe believe there were M4s in there too, bud. Okay, okay. To me, the SEALs were outgunned from the start. They never had a chance. During my kids' Little League game, I had to modify the movie quote to get the kids going. Losers always complain about their best. Winners go have ice cream. (laughs) He's eight, and it worked. Most punchable face is Captain Fry. We're agreements nice. there. From the shower scene just before they open up on the seals, he says, let's waste these fuckers. Mm. Plus, it looked to me like he had never shot a pistol before. Nice. Just the way he was holding it didn't look right. Prop from the movie, the microfilm at the end. That's oh, a great that's prop. That's a great prop. I'd like to know who killed Kennedy. So would Michael Bay. That's the second movie he's referenced. Who He wants yeah. to know who killed oh, Kennedy. Oh, yeah. That's Dropping true. Hints. My modern day rating, an 8.5. Nice, man. That wow. takes us collectively as a group to an 8.14, my friend. Which <laughs> we're talking about all the movies we've done, and eight point one four is number twenty five. That is slightly below, slightly below Raising Arizona and Big, 
slightly above Ghostbusters and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Okay. Is where that's going to fall on our movie. Acceptable. Those are all completely rewatchable films. This Absolutely. fits perfectly in there. I'm down I with that. I'm, cool. I'm totally fine with that. Well, we hope you enjoy the episode. That is the end of our Michael Bay segment of the Michael Bay, May, May of Bay Uncaged. We love you, Bay. We um, love you, but it's time to say goodbye. You're our Bay. And uh, yeah, it's been great. I, it's so much fun. Th- mm. This I could watch these. Well, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this yeah. again. But now we take it on to the Nicolas Cage version of this. We're going to be doing Gone in 60 Seconds, finishing up with Con Air. Come on now. Let's go, baby. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year, Top Gun. That is a fun, fun episode. Perfect. I believe one of you guys had never seen it before. I think it's both of us. I think, yeah. I think yeah. both Sean and AJ had never seen Top Gun. Yeah. And I was so excited. Like, Let's go see Top Gun Maverick and do all this. And you're like, okay. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> and don't forget, we have a voicemail. Call us at 319-804-9596. Leave us some feedback like today's caller. My name is Mark from Pennsylvania. Um, you guys just reviewed the movie Armageddon. And I just wanted to share a quick story. Um, I watched my father cry three times my entire life. Uh, one was when his mom died. Second time is when my youngest sister graduated high school. And the third one was watching this movie, the same thing you guys cried to, watching Bruce Willis' life flash before his eyes and then his daughter said, Daddy, no. I've never been able to watch the movie because that moment is so vivid in my mind that I'm not able to do it. But because of your podcast, I am going to go listen. I am going to go watch the movie today. Thank you. I love those stories. Right on. Yeah. You said Mark? Mark? Mark, I, yeah, I Mark so. from Pennsylvania. Mark, Mark okay. from PA. Mm. Thanks, man. Appreciate right on, you. Man. Yeah, thanks for sharing that story. That's really cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's always important. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, I'm glad you're going to go revisit it. I really am. I, I'm really excited for you to, to revisit that. And uh, I'm excited for everyone to revisit it. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching on the show. Make sure you are watching us here on YouTube. Confused Breakfast on YouTube. Make sure you're checking us out on all the social media at Confused Breakfast. Anywhere you can find anything on social media, just at Confused Breakfast. Just search Confused Breakfast and by all means, leave us a review. We love reading them on Apple Podcasts. Leave us five stars on Spotify, guys. We really do appreciate it. We love reading them. By God, go to ConfusedBreakfast.com and get some merch. Get some shirts. I think you can get some sweatshirts. I think you you could look up some wedding venues, Confused Breakfast wedding venues. Um, I think there's some basketballs on that website you can get with our logo on it. Um, I I do know that you can get some kissies on there Kiss. and uh that is a that is a yeah i'm shoehorning that in for the boys because they like that i like that a lot um and you can also go see our ratings on confusedbreakfast.com you see our individual ratings of all the movies we've ever done and our collective ratings as well thanks bye um let's go find some rockets what best best <laughs> best way to support us patreon.com slash confused breakfast join get a bunch of extra perts there this show is produced by the upload media group in cedar Rapids, iowa we got logs on the controls Woo! Log Daddy. We call him right. Log, Log Logan Logs. Log Daddy. <laughs> and we are, part of the, Daddy. we are part of the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. You can learn more about that at cloud10.fm. Confused Breakfast from Cedar Rapids. Out. Blair.